coffee and tune in each night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific to the Omega Man Radio Network with your host, Shannon Ray Davis. Omega Man Radio is taking enemy territory for Jesus Christ, Yahshua preaching the gospel of the Messiah, and ministering in deliverance and miracle healing. Add some great guest interviews, and you have the recipe for fresh oil for the airwaves. Tune in at OmegaManRadio.com. All right, everybody, we made it to Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Here on August 28, 2015, I'm your host, Shannon Davis, and welcome to Omega Man London. It's a real honor to bring to you tonight, all the way from London, England, Pastor Winston and Brenda Folks of Feed My Lambs Ministries. FeedMyLambs.co.uk. I believe that's your website, correct? That's right, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. <laughs> awesome. And um, I want to tell people we are streaming on MixLR. We're on Blog Talk. You can download a MixLR app for your smartphone. You can listen by phone at 347-215-9721. And now, praise the Lord, we're glad to be able to offer you YouTube streams. So we're streaming audio and some video right now on YouTube. I want to encourage people to check that out and show Mega Man some love. Get over there to YouTube and hit subscribe on that thing. It will tell you when we've got new video content. We've got all the archives up to date. So praise the Lord for that. If you miss any of these shows live, feel free to grab your MP3 copy over at iTunes. That's a real easy way to do it. Or you can go to soundcloud.com forward slash Mega Man Radio and pick up a copy there. And um, with that, Brother Winston, how are you doing tonight, my brother? Yes, I'm, I'm well, sir. I'm, I'm healthy and uh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Amen. <laughs> yeah. And we're favored That's to me. have you here with us every Friday. Would you like to open it up in prayer tonight? Sure thing, sure thing. Yes, I want to greet you all once again in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our soon coming King. Greet you all and um, this uh, broadcast, we love you. Omega Man loves you all and um, we pray for the blessings of God to be upon you all to, to this time and um, whatever you require of the Lord, he will give it to you. If you have a here to hear and hear, you shall be delivered in Jesus' name or you shall be set free from any form of sicknesses, any form of bondages, no matter what it may be. The Lord will set you free. That is why he provided this time for you all to be in attendance. And I pray that you will listen diligently and um, allow the word of God to bless you mightily, wherever you may be. You know, some people can, are silent and some people are loud. But wherever you are, may the Lord richly bless you. Father, we thank you for this time which you have made. And we, we just want to praise you, Lord, and give you all the glory and honor. And Lord, we pray that this is not just lip service, but Lord, is from our hearts. We really and truly thank you and love you for all the, your goodness and all your mercies and all your benefits to the sons of man whom you have created. And um, as you provided this time, Lord, for your people, may they be blessed and highly favored. I pray, Lord, that I will um, decrease and you will increase. I take authority over the prince of the power of the air. As the Bible says, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So those who are disobedient, the prince of the power of the hair is working in you. But I pray our Lord will deliver you from such things. So we take authority over principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We come against you in Jesus' name. We cover the hair, land, and sea with the blood of Jesus Christ. We cover every person that's listening with the blood of Jesus Christ. Your breakthrough, your deliverance, all about you we cover with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover myself um, Omega Man Radio, Brother Shannon and his family, my family and those who are ministers on this station, we cover your families also with the blood of Jesus Christ. We say no backlash shall befall you, and if the devil tries it, he shall be destroyed totally. So Father, we thank you for your protection. Thank you for your angels. Let your angels be around us now and to minister your um, healing, your deliverance to your people. Father, we thank you and we give you all the praise and honor we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. And as we're getting started tonight, I want to say hello to some people out there. I want to say, I'll go right down the list. We've got Jared out there tuning in, Seth Colburn, my good brother, Alan McManus, minister from Cumbria, England. We've got C. Carol Lupita. We've got uh, Precious Isaiah 1. We've got KN10. We've got C. Bacala. We've got Jean Vier in England, Brenda, Juliet, my friend from New York. We've got Angelica and Isaiah. No, Isaiah the Warrior is probably at school right now. And many other people out there tuning in. Tell a friend about these shows and others elsewhere. I can't see everybody's name out there, but welcome tonight. Brother Winston, the microphone is yours, my brother. And you're muted. Check your mute switch. Oh, yes. There you <laughs> I'm go. I'm talking in fresh air then. 
<laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Yes, um, we, we thank God for this time. We know he's going to be blessed for all of us um, listening. And we know there are many people who we don't know their names, but they're listening. You know, last week, someone um, uh, emailed us and said to us that um, while they were listening to the program, they got delivered, they got thrown down, blood, um, spitting out blood and all sorts. And it carried on for days. And the Lord delivered wow. and, and um, set that person free. And they're very, very excited. Oh, it's so great. So we know that God is doing a mighty work for those who phone in or for those who don't phone in. God will bless you. So tonight, I encourage you, or today, wherever you are, that um, certain time I'll tell you to breathe in the word or say something, just say it loud and just be full of joy. And the Lord will deliver you no matter what trouble you may be in. If you are laying on a couch or you're in a wheelchair with your feet sticking out and your plaster and all sorts, God will deliver because your time has come. There's none that God has given to Jesus Christ who is lost. And you are being given to Jesus Christ. You will not be lost in Jesus' name. Praise God. So, now our message tonight, uh, the title for our message is, um, What is Seducing You? What is Seducing You? Not who, but what. <laughs> what is Seducing You? That's the title of our message tonight or today. And... Um, we pray that the Lord will be with us right now. The Holy Spirit will give me utterance to speak the way I ought to speak and that you will be filled to overflowing with the mercies and the blessings and the wonders and the grace of our God. It is so plenteous, people. It is so plenteous that we just cannot even begin to imagine how a good God, the same way He loves me, He loves you. The same way how He set me free, He will set you free too. And He, he will set free if 100,000 people are listening, if you're not free, he will set you free. If 2 million are listening, are listening and you're not set free, he will set you free. If only you believe. How many arguments have you had in your in your lifetime? How many people have um, spoken to you about um, certain different things? If you, first of all, didn't listen to what they're saying, then they were talking in fresh air. If you didn't even believe what they're saying, then obviously it will be an, of none effect. But unfortunately, many, many people believe things that are ungodly, devilish and really really wicked and you're the ones that the lord has sent us for because you know someone tried to take you out of the way by teaching you bad doctrines and you come to a place where you think well there's no more use for life because i can't see where i'm going but you're the one the lord has sent us for because your time has come and he will not lose you Praise the name of Jesus. So be excited, people, and be very, very glad. Who is seducing you? Praise the name of Jesus. Now, as you can hear from the title, you can probably guess <laughs> the sort of scripture that we're going to use. But um, I know that it's going to be very, um, really awesome. And you may hear things that you've not heard before. But it doesn't matter. As long as you um, receive it and be blessed, that's the main thing. Praise the name of Jesus. So our first scripture will be from um, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1 and 2. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. So if you've got your Bibles with you, then you can open with me and read along with me because, you know, remember this is a quick fire thing. The program is real fast. So sometimes we do say things like, um, you know, which <laughs> sometimes is not in there, but um, it's the quickness of the thinking and all that, you know. So if you have the word in front of you, um, you can read for yourself and say, yes, okay, now I get this word. Praise the name of Jesus. So don't depend on me, but depend on the word of God. And it shall set you free. Now, the first um, from First Timothy chapter four, verse one and two, it reads this way: Now, the Spirit uh, speaketh expressly that in the last times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. One to two. Now the Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit speak to us expressly and to guide us and to let us know what time it is. And it says, in the last times you will see certain things happening. And remember, you can't do much about these certain things that are happening because the Spirit already spoken and He is in control. But what do you need to do? You need to look at yourself. If I'm here and I've got a high end on and I'm pressing my 
shirt or my trousers, something may be burnt or whatever, you know, you won't even know nothing about it. You're far from it. But the Spirit is speaking to us in this world today about the things that will easily beset us and we don't even get we don't even have time to look at them and to even think about the significance of them. But we pray that tonight in these words our lights will be turned on. We will listen and we will um, most of all look at ourselves and see what is um, seducing us and how we can actually overcome those things that are seducing us. Um, or those things that are affecting us, those things that are coming against our spirit man. So I'm going to just, um, as I finish reading this, I'm going to read another one from um, Second Timothy also, and then we're going to try to combine these two with other scriptures um, that will um, enlighten us all, including myself. Now, I like, I like the part in um, chapter 4, First Timothy, for, um, when it speaks about seducing spirits and doctrines of devils now we are in we are christians we're in churches and we are in ministries and all the rest of it and you know all the ways that we can see about how we should serve the lord and these words are written for us they're not written against us they're for us these words are meant to um, wake us up spiritually and let us see our, or the manifestation of the seducing spirits. Because where there are seducing spirits, there are doctrines of devils. Where there are seducing spirits, there are what? Doctrines of devils. I loose myself from all seducing spirits and doctrines of devils in the name of Jesus. May someone maybe want to say that with me. I loose myself from seducing spirits and from the doctrines of devils. I Ask the Lord to forgive me for taking part with seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Whatever my part may be in, seducing spirits and doctrine of devils, I rebuke it, I renounce it, and I trample it under my feet because devils have nothing to do with Jesus. And I believe that Christ is in me and I'm in him. So I turn my back. I loose myself from those things in the name of Jesus. You need to say that. And then, as I'm speaking, you won't have to wonder if you are if you are a partaker or if you know if some of these things may affect you. <laughs> it will begin to manifest itself. Praise God! So you're just breathing those words. Say, I'm breathing these words in the name of Jesus. They are the truth, and they are that water. They will wash me and they will cleanse me. Our focus and our reason for being here is for deliverance of God's people. And for healing of God's people. I may speak one way. Another person may speak another way. But if we come from the same spirit. They shall be well with us. So those who are listening. These ones probably are targeted at Christians. Even though you think. Oh nothing is wrong. And you know I'm okay. I'm going to heaven tomorrow or this day right now. I'm so holy. And I'm so this. You know and all your self opinion. <laughs> it belongs into the bank of the devil. Let the Lord walk with you. Let him teach you. Let him carry you on this life narrow way so you can get to where you're going. To, where you're going. And another scripture I will give you later on to sh tie up with what I'm saying here. So don't forget what I'm saying. Don't think that I'm being rude to you or anything. But Christians, you're the first one need to be drawn up because you're the one who carries the power of salvation in your heart. And that's no thing to play with. That's not an easy thing. It's not something to play with. You need to be upright and you must be at, at all time at ease and be cleansed by the power of God. So you must be released from uh, seducing spirits and you must be released from the doctrines of devils. You know, I was um, speaking to my wife earlier when we were talking about seducing spirits and um, doctrines of devils and so on and so on. And um, we um, had a quite uh, <laughs> a good conversation about this thing. But... Uh, uh, I look at seducing, I try to, try to break it down two ways, where you have um, people who are seduced by other people, like male or female, opposite sex, you know, we are seduced by one or the other. Um, I was saying to someone the other day, when I was a young young person, without care, and no family, and, um, you know, sky's the limit kind of thing, um, there's certain place that we'll go to, and immediately as you get into this place, you start seducing people. 
<laughs> immediately. So that's a, a, a physical type of seduction. And um, we, will, you know, sometimes you go about your business so much that um, you end up having none <laughs> because you're trying to seduce everybody at the same time. So that's one. And so everything that's seducing um, that is a is not good, you will always fail. It looks good at the beginning. It looks like something you can do and say and you know have part with, but in the end, you shall fail. That's why I said to you, renounce, turn your back on those seducing spirits which are devilish. Praise the name of Jesus. So, as we uh, continue, let me just give you the other scripture before I continue so we can join them together and so that it can make more sense, I believe. Now, um, we want to turn over to 2 Timothy, was it chapter 3, verse 1 to uh, 5. So this is going to spell it out even more strongly. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Okay, verse 1 to 5, or 1 to wherever I stop. Praise God. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For man shall be lovers of them, their own selves. Uh, man shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, um, proud, proud, blasphemer, or blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, uh, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. From such, turn away. So it tells you here in um, 2 Timothy chapter 3 um, in, in these terms. So now, we believe that uh, let me just mention this one first of all before we go on because probably this might take up a lot of time actually. Let me just take it, take it from uh, where it says uh, being incontinent. Uh, yes, incontinent. That's in verse 3. It talks about incontinent. You know, I was speaking and I was saying about, we were discussing about incontinent. You know, as in a medical term, incontinent means you have no control over your bladder and such like. And if you are male or female, you're incontinent, you have no control over your bladder or such like. So what, what do you do about it? You really, you do every single thing that you can to solve this problem. Whether it's night or day, up or down, around, you will do every single thing you can because it's embarrassing. Who wants to be embarrassed by being incontinent? No one does. That's the physical thing which you can see. But what about being incontinent spiritually? Because the Bible tells you that you were bought with a price. Therefore, you must go for God in your body and your spirit, which belongs to God. And then it, it kind of means to you that you have no control over the spirit. You have no control over the spirit of God. Jesus Christ is the one that has control of it. So if you think that you have control over it, you can tell God what to do. Then you are useless. You are incontinent. You cannot control the things of God. So remember that. Whether you are now Christian, yesterday Christian, or or however long back you you know you claim to be a Christian, if you are, um, you, if you think you're in control of the things of God, you can tell people what to wear, what not to wear. You can tell people what to speak and what not to speak. You have no control over those things. What you have to do is tell them about being born again, direct them to the Word of God, so the Word of God can make them to be persons who are in full control of what they're seeing and what they're doing. So now, if you are devilish, you're certainly incontinent when it comes to God. You have no control over God's things, over God's mind, blessings, whatever it may be. You have no control. So there are many people who are devilish, devilish minded, but they're telling you that, oh, the Lord says this and the Lord says that. And I'm a prophetess or I'm a prophet, you know, and this remember in the Bible it tells you there were prophets who were prophets of doom. There were prophets who failed the people because their application to being a prophet is ungodly. If you have no affection, then, you know, you are a person 
that is not going anywhere, basically. If you're a truth breaker, you, don't, you do not want peace. You know, some people say, I want to be delivered, but they won't allow the devils to be delivered. <laughs> there are people like that who will not allow their devils to be cast out. I've seen someone one day try to hold on to the thing, didn't want to let go. And she was struggling like, a, you know, you have like a, 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 a tug of war, you know, with, um, with, with this rope where you, you know, uh, a set of people on one hand and another set on the other hand and we try to pull and, and, you know, all are so strong and the rope stops in the middle and nothing is happening because um, the weight, the, the strength cancel each other, each other out. So this woman was um, uh, struggling to hold on to this thing and you can hear, you can hear her groaning, and I just try to hold on to this. I'm saying, I'll bind you, Satan, to cast you out. I'm trying to smash this devil. And this woman is holding on to um, the devil because she don't want to have a truth. She don't want. She do not want to have peace. A person who don't want to have peace is a person who don't do not have a truth. If you follow what I'm saying, you will not allow peace, or you will not allow the glory or the grace of God to come in, because you prefer to be a person who is a warring person. And a person who prefer to cause, to cause confusion and destruction, basically. So there are people like that. But, you know, that's a devilish thing. And when you're like that, you have no control over anything, not even yourself. So um, you now can be named as a person who's incontinent. If you follow what I'm saying, you read into it and see, you know. I may not be, uh, I may be going too fast. I'm not sure what's going on here. But all I know is that if, you, if these works manifest in you, you have no control over them. You have no control over yourself because they have control over you. You cannot, you cannot speak on Jesus' behalf because those things are fierce. They will not allow you to do such things. So now a Christian should think to themselves, you know, um, am I a Christian? Where am I going? You know, <laughs> have I thought about these things before? As they've been um, explained to me before about the effect of these things. So now, if you're there and, you know, these things... Um, uh, touch you and uh, you believe that these things are seducing you and try to keep you down, now we're going to pray and ask the Lord to release us. We said before about being released from um, seductive spirits um, and from the works of the doctrines of devils. The works of the doctrines of devils. A person who's high minded is likely to be um, seduced by a seducing devil. And the devil will overcome them because when you're high minded, God has nothing to do with that's pride. He has nothing to do with you. So therefore you're left to the elements and he will come and he will deal with you. So pride is a very nasty spirit. But most times the person who have pride will not be told because pride will not allow them to listen. But I'm hoping that, that the Holy Spirit will subdue such devils at this time and um Free your mind and free you so that you, you can hear and do something about the troubles that may be besetting you. Praise the name of Jesus. You come against those things. So if I have a high mind, if I have pride, I subdue that spirit in Jesus' name. I truly mean it from my heart. I trample it on the feet in the name of Jesus. If I'm high-minded, if I think I'm above everyone else, if I'm blinded to the truth, Lord, forgive me and deliver me. Lord, if I'm lacking anything, forgive me and deliver me so that I can hear the truth, walk in the truth, be, like, be the truth as you are, and serve mankind in the way how you desire me to serve mankind, Lord. Help me never, Lord, to be ungodly, and help me never, Lord, to deny your power. And those people who are ungodly, denying the power of God, you must turn away from them, stay far from them. But many of you say, well, I am going to convert this person. You can't go convert nobody. If the Spirit of God don't do it, <laughs> I want to see how you can do it. Um, there's many things that needs to be done for people, and if the Spirit of God can't do it, how are you going to do it? But many people say, well, I am going to do this, I am going to do that. Go ahead and try. You'll never do it. You must, you must turn from them. You must preserve yourself. Don't allow yourself to be overcome by these things. Because if you allow yourself to be overcome by them, then you become useless to God. So while you're there, 
you just speak the word of God and allow God and his power to do what you should turn away from. You don't stand and argue with some people. You know, I um, was working in a school um, in South London. I was, um, I say before, I um, I had done some maintenance, like carpentry, you know, because that's my, my trade. You know, I was doing that for a while. And um, lots of different type of people or different children from different backgrounds came to that school. And I was speaking to some Islamic, Islamic young boy one day, and um, he's only about, he must have been about 12 or 13. But he's like, it's like he knows the Quran already. And, you know, like what he would say is what the adults would say. So, like, it's like a, it's a doctrine and everybody, you know, read it and memorize it and so on and so on. And then they just stick to what they know. And no matter what you say, they don't hear you. They stick to what they know. And if you're not careful, what they're saying will draw you away because, oh, well, you know, I didn't think of this. I didn't think of that. So you start drawing back and saying, well, and your mind start playing with you. So they said, stay out, turn from them, give them, just like they're trying to give you the power of their words, give them the power of your words and turn away. They would not listen to one thing that you say. I'm talking to some of these people and they're standing in the midst of the street and they are falling asleep. Can you imagine that? You're talking to these people um, they will not listen to you what you're saying. Anything to do with Jesus, it will not be listened to. And it's like they're falling asleep. And I had many, many conversations with some of those guys. And I said one day to one of the persons, you know, the guy, a guy with, you know, I call him the, the bearded one. And um, I said to him, you know, can you tell me which Jewish person or which, which Muslim or Arab person would agree with a Jewish person? And he sort of thought for a minute and says, I said, there's not one will do that. Not one of them would agree. Not one um, Arab or Muslim type persons would agree with anything to do with, Jew in, to do with the Jewish people. And if Christ is Jew, you, you can see why they're against him, can't you? And they would not, they, they will go to the hands of the earth to try and destroy it. But Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. He was here before them and be here after them too. Praise the name of Jesus. So I'm just saying to you that these, um, there's certain things that happen that you don't need to stand up and get yourself involved. Just turn away. Speak the word and turn away. Because if Christ can be in a room or in a, in a place, speak in his word and send it to some other place to heal someone else, then his word can do the same in and through you. So you turn away from ungodly people because they deny the power of God. They deny the things of God in Christ Jesus. So turn from them because that, um, it is um, a seducing spirit. It's a devilish spirit. Turn away. The Lord wants us all to turn away from everything that is devilish. Do not give Satan a foothold in your life. Do not allow him to have any standing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, I just write this one down. I'm, I'd, um, uh, from Ephesians. Have I got it? I'm sure it's a, a chapter 4. Now, what does it talk about? Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Is it here? Praise the name of Jesus. I didn't write this one down. I just this just came to my mind about um, the devilish things and the things that are uh, so um, ruthless that we should turn away from them. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm coming here, people. You're going to get me in a second. Hallelujah. So you got to you got to deny the devil. Don't give him chance. Don't give him a place to operate in your life. Turn away from those corrupted things that he will bring to you. Turn away from um, everything that is um, devilish and have your inner man renewed have your spirit renewed and have your mind renewed so you can know what to do and how to um, to bypass certain things that will come your way praise the name of jesus bypass those things that will come in your way praise the name of jesus okay uh, let me just read from um ephesians uh, 4 let me read from 17 and see if i can get that because i'm i don't see it somewhere but i'll get it let's read from 17 um this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, having uh, the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, um, because of the blindness of their hearts, darkness blind you, who being who being past feeling, having having have given themselves over unto the sinlessness to work all on God uncleanness with um, greediness, but ye have not so learned in Christ. You have not so learned from Christ. You got to 
make sure that the things that you learn from Christ, you hold them steadfast. But if your understanding is darkened, if you're alienated from the works of God, then what good are you? So now we come back to those things that are um, seducing, those things that will um, try to take you down. Praise the name of Jesus from um, Timothy, First Timothy chapter 1. That's the, where we begin from. Um, praise the name of Jesus. So if we just, if I just quickly look at that again. I'm in two here. Let me go to one. Praise the Lord. Chapter, uh, yes, okay. Uh, first Timothy chapter 4. Okay. That's, this is the first scripture which we had. And remember what we we're talking about. What is seducing you? So some of the things I mentioned are some of the things that will um, seduce you, entice you, and draw you away from the will and purpose of God for your life. When you are enticed, when you're seduced and drawn away, you become blind to the things of God. You become blind to the works of God. You become blind to what you should do for the Lord. And this is this have no respect of person. Whoever decide to walk in darkness, you'll be in darkness still. Because if you don't surrender to Jesus, you'll never come out. So therefore, now you're 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 adhering to seducing spirit and the doctrines of devils. In um, Deuteronomy 18, it tells you there should none be found amongst you that make your son or your daughter to pass through the fire, or that use a divination, observer of time, an enchanter, a witch, a charmer, a wizard, a consultant with familiar spirit, a necromancer. Um, all these works are an abomination to the Lord. And for these abomination, do he draw them out from before you? For these abomination, do he draw them out from before you? So those who are uh, had the doctrine of the devil, where you've been sorcery, witchcraft, all that sort of stuff, the Lord will draw them from before you. If you allow him to, he will deliver you from any such things if you allow him to. But if you're going to keep on crying, oh, I've been bewitched. Oh, I've seen a demon. Oh, um, you know, you're crying about every little thing. <laughs> you're not concentrating on what you should concentrate on which is the power of God that will come to release you. He will drive them out from before you. Hence, we talk about deliverance. He will drive them out from before you. And it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the last times some shall depart from the faith. Now, how many of you there listening or what you can say to someone who has departed from the faith? You may still come to church, you may still still be in a church. You may go to see, you know, Sunday service every week, but still you have departed from the faith because your mind. You, when you're in church, your mind is somewhere else. When you're in church or you're in a ministry, your mind is fixed on the things that you are doing, and the thing that you're doing takes you away from the faith. Anything that takes you from the Word of God takes you away from the faith. When you're taken away from the faith, then anything can beset you. Any evil that's passing by can um, attach itself to you. Any doctrine of devils that's passing by can attach itself to you because you have no covering. The Bible says you must dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Say with me, I, call your own name, will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will not allow myself to be seduced or turned aside from um, by wicked spirits. So, as he says, we are departed from the faith. We are in church, we are in ministry, we're sitting around listening, but our minds are not where it should be. So therefore, we might as well not be in a church situation. We may as well be on the beach somewhere, because if you're on the beach somewhere, you'll still be thinking about the things that you'll be set by. If you're in um, a cinema somewhere, you won't hear what you're saying, or what the film is saying, because your mind is somewhere else else so it tells you here some people have departed from it how many people do you know that's departed from the faith but well, we're putting a petition for them today so lord in jesus name those whom the lord has given you who have departed from the faith bring them back in jesus name lord i pray for them to be to have salvation bring them back in the name of jesus christ lord i speak the power of your word over these people I will not get entangled with yoke of bondage with them, but I will speak the words that you will speak it. Bring them back, Lord. Have mercy on those who have departed from the faith. Some people who have departed, departed from the faith, Lord, has been hurt badly by other Christians. 
Um, some people who are departed from the faith, Lord, are made often, made um, of none effect because of the doctrines of the devils that they met up who meant to be, that they met upon who are meant to be Christians, who are meant to be people who are showing, who should be the, um, showing the way, having the light shining so that people can see where to go. Lord, forgive those people, Lord, and bring them back. It's not their fault. Is because they were seduced by um, the doctrines of devils. There are many people today, if you think what I'm saying is strong, there are many people today in certain churches, you cannot tell them about being born again. You cannot tell them about devils. You cannot tell them about being healed or delivered. You can't tell them anything to do with the New Testament because as far as they're concerned, it is gone. It's not written in the Bible. But they're telling you by their own doctrines and by the thing that they think and say that, you know, you should not take part in it because it's not right. It's not relevant and it's devilish. Just imagine they're calling the Holy Spirit devil. So therefore, if you go and you're with such people, what's your end going to be? You'd be just as strong like a stone like they are or, you know, stubborn and will not hear anything from anybody because you've been seared with an with a hot iron, as the Bible puts it. Your conscience has been destroyed. So a lot of people depart from the faith, not because they want to backslide, but they've been hurt or they don't see the relevance of it. They, they are hearing one thing and seeing another. So therefore, if it's like this, well, I'm going to go away from it. So people do. So when these um, questions come up and people say, oh, you know, I've turned back, it's not always that they're bad, that they're bad people. It's just that they don't understand and the people who they met up on um, has thrown them out. If you go to uh, certain places, they'll say there's no deliverance. They will say, no, well, there, won't, there won't be no deliverance there because Christ has not been invited anyway to give you deliverance in certain places. There are many, and they make up all these excuses and make up all these um, uh, doctrines or write all these books about how you should do this and how you should do that. And Jesus Christ has not been invited into those places, into those books. So therefore, um, you know, you have been overtaken by these things and be seduced and walking in the doctrine of devils. Many so-called pastors are walking in the doctrine of devils because they don't believe what Jesus says. They don't preach what Jesus says. They're quick to grab up um, revised versions because they don't have to be um, exposed to the real thing and to be put ashamed and their conscience being pricked all the time. So they agree with people who agree with them. But Christ has been left out. The one who died for you and I, hanged on the cross, feet nailed, hands nailed. Can anybody that's listening right now think about the pain in a person's feet? If you step on a nail, how painful is that? If someone takes a sharp object and prick your feet, how painful is that? How long do you cry for? And Jesus Christ um, endured the nail in his feet, endured the nail in his hands to save us. And then we're allowing foolish people to deny us of the truth and to rob us of deliverance and to rob us of healing and to rob us of the will and purpose of God. How dare they? Which man in this world has ever died for any of us? Who can take us to heaven but Jesus? No one else can. He endured the pain. If any other humans endured what he did, then come and see me. But none other has endured such things for love. For the love of the brethren. For the love of the people of God. That's why we're here. So you should not be overcome by these spirits. And these spirits are working and operating and these so-called people who deny deliverance to God's people. On one hand, he says, you should be in Zion, at the feet of Zion. You should be always at Mount Zion to be healed and delivered. They say no, because their doctrine is telling you no, you don't need that. All you need to be is to say, I believe in Christ, and that is it. No, no forgiving, no asking none of those things. And, oh, you're going to heaven. You can go back and do all the sins you did before you said, oh, I believe in Jesus. You can do all the other things. Oh, that's fine. You already said you believe in Jesus. That's fine. It's fine. You're going to heaven. Not so. But these people dare to rob you. They're brazen in front of your face. Devilish. 
central and wicked and they're in front of your face and denying um, the will and purpose of God to manifest in you. Say to him, Lord, forgive them. Lord, forgive them. And forgive me for having bad thoughts about them. <laughs> Even though, you know, they, I, you know, I, I've been in places, I've been to my pastor in, in um, Africa. He was um, of a certain background and this background, they do not believe that there's healing today. They said that it's past and it's for the apostles, not for us. When Jesus says he will pour his spirit on all flesh, <laughs> but they're telling you, oh no, it's not for today. Jesus says he, he will anoint you to preach the gospel. Oh no, not for today. And in preaching the gospel, that means there's healing and deliverance. There's all manner of goodness um, in the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But their preaching and their doctrines is not of God, so that nothing of God can happen or manifest in and through them. Not one thing. But it gets me riled up a little bit to know that Jesus Christ has surrendered himself for us so that we can overcome every form of devilish things. And they're saying, no, 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 no. They don't even mention the devil, not only anything else. But the Bible tells you here, it's speaking expressly, it's speaking directly to us, saying and telling us that people have departed from the faith. People have been seduced by seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You know, uh, a lot of people like to say, oh, the spirits say this and the spirits say that. What spirit? Is it the Holy Spirit or seducing spirit? Many people are walking by this nature hand in hand with seducing spirit and making the cross of jesus christ of none effect making the cross of jesus christ of none effect cannot affect anybody because they tell it a lie but there's no um lie that can overcome the truth and the truth is christ has died for us and given us a way out not to be lured by wicked spirits not to be lured by the doctrine of devils not to be lured by witchcraft sorcery not to be lured by um whether you are a mason or you are whatever you may call yourself the doctrine that you use you're luring people to their death because the lord says when you use such things lure people into it, you become what abomination you can get up, up you can get uh, as upset as you like but that is what it says in the word of god we are we are ordained to be preachers and we must preach the word of god and what it says if you take people away from the word of god and seduce them with devilish doctrines what are you but a devil king and chief of devil but i say to you you can bully us as much as you like you can bully christians as much as you like but remember this you are you you have a chief position um in the seats it's like being in the roman arena and caesar has a chief seat, um, seat to all that goes on but you now you have a chief seat in front of the fire the lake of fire you can you can throw all christians out of the world you can do as you like but believe me the day will come that you will have the chief seat at the edge of the fire and what do you be thinking then yeah and those people who you have cast into the fire with yourself they are waiting for you to to rip you to pieces because you've told them a lie you have told them a lie and coming against God's work and purpose. So people, I, I encourage you to think about these seducing spirits. Who have you been seduced by? A lot of people have been to ministries and expect certain things from certain people. And then they are let down when they see the operation of those people who they respect. Because they are using a seducing spirit to seduce you and give you doctrines of devils. You know, there are so many things we can mention about this, but one of the things is offering or when people go to offer and the, the attitude of some people when it comes to offering. In the Bible, it tells you, it um, mentions about tithes, it mentions about offerings. And the Lord says that the tithing that people should tithe is 10% of what they earn, especially financially. If you're going to bless the, the, the church where you are, and then you can give an offering. But some people, First of all, they're going to bring a certain amount of book in, books in. Forget about the Bible. Certain people are going to bring all these things in. 
and then you have uh, certain people who uh, will say, okay, I'm going to give you today Psalms 150. And the words of Psalms 150, God's going to bless you with them. And now because we are into Psalms 150, you must give $150 or 150 pounds. Each person must do that. <laughs> That's what I'm going to say to you. It doesn't say that in the Bible. I'm not against giving people. We must give, but give according to what God says. Then you won't be seduced by these people who will let you down because you expect one thing about what they say. When it doesn't happen, then you turn back. I'll turn your back on God. Start cursing God because what that person said didn't manifest. Because you you met up on a seducing spirit. Lots of people who have been asked to give things and been asked to. Um, Someone plead to you and with their shirts with their shirt sleeves wiping out tears and say, Oh, I'm so poor, I'm so destitute, especially the ministry. And you give to those people, and then you'll find that you'll never keep any money. As soon as your earning is gone, you don't know where it's turned, it's gone. Because you have been seduced by a seducing spirit, which is devilish, and they rob you because you they won't allow you to have anything. But the Lord says he will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. And all mankind more than what you can ever think or imagine. So I mention that because lots of people I know of who has been asked for certain financial blessings, and there's an alternative to the, the financial blessings which they were asked for. But if you've been asked for financial blessings and it's not godly, don't do it. It must be godly. It must be according to what God says for you to get because you'll be seduced by these people. And this mammon thing today is rampant as anyone else out there will know. The thing that we are paying attention to and talking about, this one is rampant, taking people away from God, taking people from, from the will and purpose of God. And another thing with mammon as well, if you go to a, a sorcerer or you go to a witch or a person who a necromancer or a wizard, you have to give them money. When you give them your money in your hands, you will find that you will have no money. You have no saving. You can't keep any money. You'll be, you'll be fortunate to keep your house even or the roof over your head because you've been taken over by what? A seducing spirit, a devilish spirit, taking away all that you have. Take away what? all that you have so there are many people out there who are christians and they can't find themselves to make ends meet and they say well since i've been a common christian i have no money before you were a christian you had none because you gave it to sorcerers but you only notice now because you become a christian and the sorcerers still have control of you because you, you have not renounced him you have not renounced the witch you have not renounced those wicked people who are crystal gazers star gazers and crystal ball readers you have not renounced them each one you have to give your money Someone gave a testimony about uh, crystal ball. Um, uh, it's our late John Lyndon Cook. He was giving a testimony about um, crystal ball, and um, he was ministering to somebody one day, and this crystal ball came up into this um, ministration. He, he took the, mini the um, ball from this person, and he tried to hit this thing with a hammer, and it would not break. The crystal ball would not break. As heavy a hammer you could find, and he hit this thing with his hammer, and it could not break. They had to take it into the lake, right into the middle of the lake, and drop it into the water, and then it sunk to the great depth of that lake. But it could not be broken. So you can imagine, if someone done uh, uh, some sort of curse or spell or some sort of gazing for you and do something for you uh, against someone who you think is your enemy, and but you have to... Uh, put money in their hands. So now they are destroying you by putting money in their hands. And then they're destroying the other person who you've employed them to work, who, whom you've employed them to do. I've seen another person who um, was going to a church not too far from where I live. And this pastor, he reads the, um, the, 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 ver the chapters from the end <laughs> to the beginning. And mostly it's Psalms um, from the end to the beginning. That's how this man read the thing. And it's, it, it turned everything around and caused everyone to be confused. And this man was cursed. 
he, he, uh, this man was cursed by someone who's going to that church. That person gave some money to this pastor to curse this person who was going to the church. Then he told this, this man that he has cursed him because that person has paid him to curse him. Yeah, And these people use um, water, they use crystal balls, all these things. But my point is when you go to these people, put yourself into their control, the devil that they're using, um, physical things cannot remove them. The only thing that can remove them is Jesus Christ who will come and remove the stain or, or the stigma or the, um, the filthiness, whatever may have come in through the spirit because you have gone to them. And you know, the unfortunate part about it is if a person is doing these things, whether they're sorcerers, which is aware they may be, when you go to these people to help you, then all the things, all the works they've committed, I believe before you met them, all of a sudden now you become partaker of all those wickedness which they have done. Many people find it difficult to be delivered because they don't think on the things that really holds them back. You should renounce your part in those people who you have gave money to and renounce all the works they did before you met them because those things come up on your shoulders. Renounce them, say, Lord, and then you try and see if you don't get released. And then you might think, oh, this pastor is not so foolish after all. <laughs> Try and see. Many people only see the things that they believe that they can see or they, they have taken part in. Oh, I only said this. I only said that. No. From you go to them, then you take part in all that they have done. And if you are fortunate as a minister, you may meet upon someone that will confess that to you. I was ministering to a lady one day. She's um, from... India, she was, she was, she wore the sari and all those things, you know, serious um, Hindu uh, magician she was or uh, sorcerer. And somehow she got saved. And she came to one of the deliverance meetings and the, the spirit began to manifest and began to say what she did and how they're not going to let her go and how they're so powerful and they're this and they're that. So I said, I said, to, the, I said to, to the demon when it's manifesting, I said, you... You are just a demon. You are nothing but spit. And I will cast you out in Jesus' name. And the, the woman pulled her shoulders back and said, and the thing says, I am not a demon. I am an Indian God. That's what it says. If swing his throat, yeah, how dare you call me a demon? I'm a God. <laughs> and these are the things that these people are using. So now, if you see how strong this thing is, when you take part with these people, that strong thing comes to hold you bound. Similar to the Ouija board or any such things. That one is a deadly one. That is beyond measure, that thing. But because people take it as a laugh, they don't see the seriousness of the Ouija board. That thing, if you're not under any type of covering, and if you're in the room or you're taking part in a seance, as they call it, whatever is coming by will jump on you and you will not get rid of them because you don't know Jesus. And they'll make you want to kill yourself they make you want to go on top of a building and jump off. They want to make you do all such, all sorts. Cut yourself. They make you to do such things you just cannot believe. So people are saying, you know, oh, this person want to cut themselves. This person want to do this. This person want to commit suicide and all the rest of it. You should ask them, have they been into the science? Have they um, played with the Ouija board? What have they done? Rebuke that thing and they will not have such thoughts again. Seducing spirits. Seducing spirits. That's what they are. Devilish doctrines. That's what they are. So many things. Because as a devil, you will speak lies. As a devil, you will be a hypocrite. As a devil, you, you have no conscience. <laughs> it's cut off. So when you go to a devil to help you, don't expect nothing but hypocrisy, lies, and have your conscience destroyed. When you go to a devilish uh, practitioner, this is what he'll do for you. There's no life in sight for the persons who go to a devilish practitioner. No life whatsoever. 
But I want someone to say to me, I have life in Christ. I have life in Christ. Christ came to give me life and give me life abundantly. I have abundant life in Christ. I sever myself from every form of seducing spirit. I, I sever myself from every doctrines of devils. I surrender uh, my, I surrender, I, um, I cut myself off from speaking lies. I cut myself off from speaking hypocrisy. I cut myself off from a conscience that is full of lies, full of hypocrisy. I cut myself from all those things in the name of Jesus. I depart from all seducing spirit. I depart from every form of devilish doctrines. Someone need to say that to this right now before we go, before we finish um, our this session. So we touch many different points. But the thing is, all those points that we have touched, they're all strongholds of the devil. And for those who are partaker of such, then you find yourself being like a person having no aim in life. Having no aim in life. You, you know, you get up every morning, you have no hope. How many males and females are out there that gets up in the morning and have no hope? And most of those people, when their parents see them acting funny. Their parents are the ones who bring them to, uh, to see someone or to have a bath or to have a reading or something like that. And when they do these things, they become worse than ever. Then they will start getting into themselves. You bring them to the doctors and doctors, okay, we recommend this person to go to a place we call the Mosley or to go to a place um, that they call Bethlehem. Bethlehem. That is the place, or, Beth, or whatever it's called. That's the place where people who have not got sound mind are placed into. But they have no sound mind because of the things that happened to them. Going to a devilish thing, going to have baths, being covered by devils, then you'll act like one. I knew, I knew someone who was a deacon, and his wife was a deaconess, and their, their daughter had a problem um, where um, she was seeing things, you know, like uh, seeing things that are not there kind of thing. You know, all, you know this, your mind has been overcome by these things. But the young lady had, I believe, got in the problem because they went to seek in Egypt and not seek the help from Jesus Christ. And if they are, if there are deacons or deaconess and they're so-called in the church, that means they are not in the service. Their mind is on a place where they can bring their daughter or their sons to be relief, relieved from these um, um, spiritual problems which they have. Um, and when it becomes too much, and they go to the doctors. The doctors have no idea, no clue how to deal with these things. Okay, here are some injections. Here are some tablets. Make you docile. Make you not able to think. And that's what we'll do for you now until we can find a solution. And they will never find it. Because when you call a devil into your life, he will destroy your life. Unless you allow Jesus Christ in, your life will be thrown down and put in suspense that um, you are... You are five years old and you're stuck there. And now you're 50, you're still five because you're stuck in a place. You have been suspended because the devils have control of you. But you need Jesus Christ to have what? Control over your life. You were bought with a price. So you must glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Do not glorify the devil. He comes with his trinity to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Lord has come to give you life and to give you life abundantly. The Lord comes to promise you, he, he gives you a full assurance in that promise that he'll give you eternal life. And his promise is yes and amen, he'll never turn back. So don't go into a place where you become an abomination to the Lord or you become a person who shall to crucify Christ every day, shall to destroy him every day. No one can. No one can. There's no one alive. No one that ever be alive in any century that can destroy Jesus. No matter what they say, they cannot prevent him. No one. 
So people, I suggest that if you know anybody that think that way, turn them from it fast. If you've been, impart, if you've been imparted or you've been, you have had impartation from any of those things and you're not walking the way you believe that you should walk in Christianity, you need to renounce knowing a sorcerer or a witch, renounce the money you place in their hands, renounce the things that they've done before. Some people drive people crazy. Some people even kill or murder, cause you to die. In God's eyes, that's an abomination. No one has a right to kill anybody. God gives and he takes. But no one in between that has any right to destroy another person's life. In any way, physical or spiritual. So as we mentioned before, being, by being incontinent. Um, uh, in, the medical, in the medical term, you're incontinent because you cannot hold on your waterworks. You, you have no control over it. But you also have no control over a spiritual matter. If it's devilish, you have no control over it. If it's godly, you also have no control of it. You have to surrender to um, the control of who is controlling you. If you have Christ controlling you, surrender to him. Don't try and do his work for him. Let him do it for himself. Because the devil will do, work for, he will do his work for himself. You can't, you can't, you can't take his, he's going to do it for himself. Because the things you do, he makes you to do it. Because now you have surrendered yourself to his will and purpose. But now you are born again. Cut those things off. Cut them off. Do not have any fellowship with them at all. I'm praying that today I'm talking to someone. Having those seduction or seducing spirits that will come against you, control you, take over your life. All those things. No, no, no. That can be stopped now. But it will only be stopped if you recognize that it is and you're honest with yourself that it is and you can't control it because that situation, you're incontinent in that situation. You have no control. You cannot prevent it. But Jesus Christ can. And look how that word exposed so many Christians. <laughs> Don't worry about anybody else. So many Christians. You have no control over Jesus. He has control over you. If you don't allow him to have control over you, you have no control at all. You're not dwelling in the secret place of the Messiah. You're not under the shadow of the Almighty. You can't say this of the Lord is your refuge or your fortress or your God and him, in him would you trust. You can't say those things. You cannot. But when he's in charge, he will guide you. And every step of the way, there's a miracle. You know, sometimes I look back on my own spiritual walk. And when I take a time to just look back on it, um, there are such miracles that the Lord has done. And some are small and some are great. Sometimes you don't really focus on them too much because you don't want to say, oh yeah, you don't want to be too big-headed and you, know, you don't want to um, take um, hold of God's heritage and make it your own. But when you, sometimes you just sit down and just look back at what the Lord has done. You know, somebody with a chorus said, you know, what the Lord has done for them, they cannot tell it all. It's true. But you have to start from the beginning. As you go along, something will happen you don't, you don't recognize till a long while after. But each second of your life, God is giving you a miracle. Each second of your life, great things are happening. And you want to know why? One of the reasons why as well? You will see a lot of people who become jealous of you. <laughs> so if you're jealous of someone or something, you have to be able to see what it is you're being jealous of. You can't just be jealous, you know, willy-nilly. You're jealous because you see something that you're jealous of. So a lot of uh, Christians, people are jealous of them, and they will go and complain, so, you know, oh, this person is against me, this person is jealous of me. But they're not, they're not thinking right, but what are they seeing for them to be jealous of you? It may be a good thing they're saying. They're seeing. So now you, you encourage them to receive the good thing that they're, that they're seeing, that they become jealous of you for because they have no control over it. They cannot, they try everything they can to control you, but they have no control over you. They take every device, they report you, they take you to, to the head, the, 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 um, the head person of your, of your division or your, wherever you work and the, the, the highest person to take you, oh, and complain about you. Oh, this person has done that. This person has done that. But it's jealousy. And why are they jealous? Because they can see something in you that they can't control. They see something in you that gives you peace. 
They see something in you that gives you love. Your attitude towards them and others are far different. You, in fact, should be the head of your section rather than them. But they are seeing something in you they are jealous of, which is godly. So don't always be put out by this because when you see these things, say, Lord, thank you that you're showing them something godly in me. What about that? How beautiful would that be if you said that and walked that way? Lord, thank you because they've seen something godly in me. That's why they like the way they are. Can you imagine that? Think about it for a second. Thank him. Thank him that your, your conscience would be in the right place. Your conscience wouldn't be overtaken by um, seducing spirits or devilish spirits speaking lies or hypocrisy. None of those things happen. Because the Lord, now I understand that the devil is always jealous. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When he can't destroy, steal, and kill, he gets very upset. So when now you are a Christian and people come against you, you say, oh Lord, I can't take this. I can't stand this because this one is against me. No, thank him for showing them something godly. And pray for them to be renewed in the spirit of their mind. Pray for them to be delivered. So now you look and say, Lord, now I understand. I am so sorry. Forgive me for thinking that way. Lord, thank you. Keep on showing them something godly in me. Ask them to come and inquire of me what is godly in me so I can tell them how, how great you are and that you will, you are the savior of mankind. Salvation is you and you is salvation. Wow. Turn it around, people. Oh, this person is against me. Oh, that person is against me. Oh, I'm leaving my job. You leave your job, go somewhere else, the same thing happened because other devils will see something godly in you. Stop, think. There's something godly in you which they see. And they are bad-minded of it because a liar is a bad-minded person. Uh, uh, people who are in the doctrines of devils are bad-minded people. Hypocrites are bad-minded people. Yeah, Liars, thieves, people who do witchcraft and sorcery. I was speaking to one person and they were saying to me that they had a neighbor. And because they decided to build a house, the, the neighbor has their own house. They have everything they want in there. They have fridge, all, your, all the rest of it. They have everything in their house. And as soon as he decided to build a house on his plot of land, the neighbor rose up against him and went to all manner of sorcerers and all manner of wicked people to destroy him because he's trying to do something which is good. He's trying to do something for his family. And this man do not want him to do it. This man wants him to depend on him. And in the end, the man accusing him of stealing his brief off the line that was washed. So, you hear know what I say to you? The man accused him of stealing his brief off the line. Or where it was washed and put on the clothesline. It was such a terrible situation. But there was something good about what he was doing. And the man didn't like the good that he was doing. So they became jealous of him. You may be doing good. Someone may come become jealous of you. And someone may not like you. But don't take it negative. Negatively. Take it as a blessing. Say, Lord, thank you for shining your light in and through me. That's why they're bad minded against me. That's why they're jealous of me. That's why the sorcerer want to kill me and can't kill me. That's why the witch want to kill me and can't kill me. Because what is in me is good cannot be destroyed someone turn things around don't moan and groan and defeat yourself by your uh, your talking sprinkle your conscience from the wicked works cause it to be torn down and then you can begin to walk with your lord and it your way shall be made safe he become a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path you know the word of god is settling in heaven it is settled forever that's what it is he will light your candle. He will show you the way. He will cause you to have um, to be on high, to have the rights to walk anywhere in this earth because any, all places in this earth belong to the Lord. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If he's in you and you're in him, you can do anything you like because he gives you the opportunity to do so. And no devils can cause your exit from this world. No devils can prevent you from doing the things of God. Just surrender to him. And he's warning you here, he said, there are things that people will try, but he's ahead of all those things. He's already got them in derision. He's already caused them to flee seven ways, even though they may come in one way. He caused the wicked and his device to be turned backwards. He, ca he caused the device of the um, wicked ones to be turned into derision. 
and those wicked ones who are against you and I, spirit, this is wicked spirits that are against you and I, he caused them to turn and to bite and devour one another. So the, the enemy that's against you, pray to the Lord, say, Lord, cause the spiritual, my spiritual enemy to turn on one another and bite and devour one another. Lord, cause them to be occupied or preoccupied with themselves and they will leave me alone. Turn things around, people. Turn things around. Don't get panicky. Don't always cry and shout. Turn, turn things around. So, you don't allow seducing spirits to overcome you because now you have the word. You don't have to worry, wonder about what the Sata says. What is seducing you? <laughs> Nothing is seducing me because <laughs> I have Jesus and he's in control. You know, well, you can say that. You follow what I'm saying to you? Nothing is going to, no, I'm seducing me because I'm, I'm, I've been free, I'm free from seducing spirits. So I'm praying that the Lord will free you tonight or today, wherever you are, from seducing spirits. I pray the Lord will also free you from the doctrines of devils. You won't go to sorcerers. You won't go to witches and demons. Uh, you won't go to the places that your mother or your father brought you into. You won't, you'll turn your back on those things. And uh, where your mother ask your, the Lord to forgive your mother and father because they didn't know no better to bring you into evil. And if you have been into evil for, for fun, ask God to forgive you. There are many young people today who are into evil for fun. Think it's a fun thing to be a, a sorcerer. Think it's a fun thing to do witchcraft. Think it's a fun thing to be gothic. Think it's a fun thing to go into those kind of spiritual wickedness. Most people who are into such the dark heart are mainly the ones who you think they will try to commit suicide, they will try to cut themselves, so many things. Those things lead your children, lead our children into darkness. But who knows that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life? I do. I'm sure you do too. So guide your children towards that. Guide yourself towards the truth and the life and return your back on those things that will cause you to expose yourself to devils and doctrines of devils and walking in all manner of wickedness. No, turn away from those things because you can. Just make up your mind. Say, Lord, I turn away from these things. I repent of my part in these things. I will not be tempted by these things. I will not be tempted by seducing spirits. I will not be tempted by doctrines of devils. Whatever doctrine may want to come my way from whatever quarter, Lord, let me dwell in your secret place. Let my spirit that you put within me destroy and prevent the doctrines of devils to manifest themselves in my life. Lord, I examine myself and I pray that I will not walk in lies. I will not walk in hypocrisy. Oh God, forgive me. Help me. Deliver me from such a wicked spirit, Lord, for being a hypocrite. Saying one thing and doing another. Never meaning what I say. Because in my hypocrisy, I am telling lies, 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 lies. Some people tell so much lies, they tell a lie to fix a lie. That is devilish people, central and wicked, need to be destroyed totally from your thinking. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm just about to um, finish off what I'm going to say here. Um, just one more quick comment from, um, where is it? Uh, was it uh, James or Colossians? Uh, shall I? Shall I not? Yeah, okay. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, in, um, in James, they speak about the, the, the tongue and what the tongue, when it says things, and it's an it's a, it's a, it's a evil on its own and cannot be... Um, uh, controlled um, so many different things it talks about but we want our tongue to be like the tongue of the pen of the ready writer or the tongue of the learned we want our tongue to be um, like Christ our mind our speaking the things that we do are like, like Christ so you know we need to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift us up humble ourselves in his sight and he shall lift us up. Speak not evil. Speak not evil one of another. As it says here, 
speak not evil one of another. Brethren, uh, one of another brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law. Or in this case, you're speaking evil of Christ because Christ has actually um, ordained certain people and bring them into service. Then you're speaking evil against them. Very bad. So evil is such a uh, wide subject um, but there are many things that we can do that will make us to be evil, thinking evil, doing evil. And we don't want that. We don't want that. Praise the name of Jesus. We don't want to walk in a spirit where we are dwelling in lust or in envy. Those things are wicked and devilish. Envy, envious spirit, such a terrible spirit. Spirit of unforgiveness, such a terrible spirit. Envy and block you totally. Unforgiveness block you totally from the will and purpose of God. So if you say you're a, you're a Christian, you're in church and so on, and you're an envious person, you know you're blocked from the will and purpose of God. If you're an evil person, you do evil, you know you're blocked from the will and purpose of God. And you're the one that turned people back and caused people to turn back from the faith. But we prayed earlier on for, God to, to ask, for you to ask God to forgive those kind of thing so that um, all things can become well in the end. There are lots more to this. I don't think I even got in the small amount of this just yet. And I'm hoping that sometime in the future I might go back to it as well and even say and do more about this. But uh, this seducing spirit, um, those things that are seducing you, it's, it's very wide. It's not just for one or hour, hour and a half, whatever. It's, you know, you can go on for some time. And we need to have good understanding in these things so that um, we are blameless when the day comes. When Jesus Christ comes, we are blameless. We cannot be blamed. Praise the name of Jesus. So you out there who have touched evil, the most thing you want to remember is that if you paid some money to somebody to do evil for you, Remember that all the things that person have done up until they met you, when you come into agreement with them, then you come in agreement with the things that they have done and you're just as guilty as they are. You need to turn your back from them, ask God to forgive you, renew you, renew your right spirit within you, turn your back on all those things, mention them if you remember them at all. Ask God to separate you and them so you can be a useful vessel in the house of God. And all the other things, what is evil, um, works, ask God, think about it. And be truthful and ask God to, Lord, help me to turn away from these things. If you're there right now in your room, wherever you may be, that place is cleansed by the word of God. Just breathe in the blood of Jesus Christ, maybe seven times. Hold your hands up in the air. Don't say anything. Just hold your hands up there. Say not one word. And what will happen after you're breathing seven times? In and out, a big breath like you were running somewhere and you're out of breath. Breathe in and out, do it seven good times and then hold up your hands and don't say nothing and what, what God will do for you because many things are surrounding you that needs to be kicked out, need to be made manifest and to be cast out. And now is the time that the Lord will come for his great manifestation to manifest in and through you, to deliver you and show you that what I am saying is what he wants you to hear and to make the things manifest in you so you can be a useful servant of Christ. So, uh, without further ado, Brother Shannon, I'm going to turn this back over to you right now because I can go on quite some time with this one. Um, so, you know, give people a chance to phone in if they want to. Uh, we pray for them, whatever the case may be. Okay? Praise God. If you're just tuning in, we're live with Pastor Winston and Brenda Folks of Feed My Lambs Ministries. We're going to go to a song here in just a moment. And if you'd like prayer today, if you need uh, prayer for your body, you need deliverance, you have a question, a comment, you need, you have another special need tonight, we'd love to pray with you. You can call in right now at area code 347-215-9721, 347-215-9721 to get in the queue. Press option one. If you're outside the USA, if you want to put your phone number in the chat room, we can call you. Or if you want to add me as a friend on Skype, Omega Man Radio, we can patch you that in that way too. Uh, before we take a break, Pastor Winston, I want you to uh, tell people about your church, uh, when and where you meet. Also, give out your website and tell people how they can support your ministry, please. 
Amen. I'll do that. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, greeting once again, everybody, and um, thank you for listening, and I pray that God will bless you richly. Now, as um, Brother Shannon just said about our website, our place of worship, and so on, I'm just going to give out some information to you, and um, you can look into it, and um, if you can make it to our ministry, it would be so wonderful. So, um, the, first thing, the first thing I want to give you is our website, because that's very important, because on our website, all information are on there. But I'll give you some other inf information as well. Now, our website is www.feedmylambs.co.uk. www.feedmylambs.co.uk. That is our website. That's you can get on our, on our website. On the website, you have um, the, donation, the, the, the donation button, which you can donate to our ministry. Um, if you want to give something towards the works that we do, it'd be so welcome and such a great thing for those who would like to do such a thing. And um, we give you also our um, email address as well. So if you fail on one account, you can use the other um, for donation, um, you know, because I've had um, emails, people saying that, you know, they had a little bit of obstacle with um, PayPal. But with that thing, you just got to persevere with them. Because you know they're very um, security-minded. So if you do decide to give, you know, you've got to persevere. And, you know, not just one time because they do test you out before they um, allow you to use their sites. Anyway, so I said um, our, our website, I just gave it to you. Um, on there, the donate button, you can press to donate to our ministry and for the things that we do. Now, I just want to mention also about um, donation. You know, as we are in Africa, we went, you know, we're in um, East Africa and we want to help the people to help themselves so we try and build them first of all a place of worship church and then we try to get involved with building schools and um having our own brand uh, of school and which um you know is specified by the government as well so we're not going out you know we're not doing things on our own but we have all these things but it all takes money so what we decide to do is just when people give towards that, then we just give it to them, you know, and uh, allow them to use what um, been given to them to help them to build their their churches or place of worship or um, whether it's school or not, because they need a lot of help, people. Uh, there's certain places, I mean, East Africa, it is so a way out. Children have no chance of going to school because they, they are miles away from the school. So if you can bring something near to their village, uh, a school near to their village that they can actually get education. People love education in um, Africa. People will do anything to get the school fee to send their children to school. So schools and churches are very important. And the Lord sent me over to East Africa, I think it's, um, was it 2003? I had a vision and he sent me there, show me certain persons who I should meet and um, how they would um, walk with me in the anointing and to anoint everything and everywhere. So that was a direct um, order from God, which has given me for many other places like e, like India, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, those places, China, um, some those far places, Ethiopia, I see like East Africa as well. Um, uh, I think, was it Sweden? Sweden, quite a few different places. He's actually told me that I, I've got to go there, but um, obviously it's in this timing that will happen. So I'm not rushing after that, but what, what I am doing and want to do is where I am, is to make the best of it. And being in, As in East Africa where we are, we want to make the best of it by build, helping them to build, helping them to stand on their own two feet, donate to them um, um, canoes and that type of thing that they can do their own fishing, um, seed that they can plant, sunflower seed, that type of thing, you know. There's just so much that we can do and we're trying to help so that they can stand on their own two feet. So if you give something to the ministry, first of all, you, you will see on our uh, Facebook what is that your finance is doing? So we're not going to take your finance put it in our own pocket, but we're going to put it into God's work. So God's work can manifest because what I have in this world, I have to leave. What I have, if I amass a whole um, fortune, I have to leave it. But I want the, my fortune to be in heaven, stored up in heaven, doing God's work. That's what I want to do. And if you take part, like I said to you earlier about the purpose, persons who take part with sorcerers and those kind of people, what they've done, you have taken part. But also, as a Christian, 
building God's work, doing his thing. You take part, it's like you have done it as well. You are, you are registered as part of that. So it's worth thinking about to give something to the works of God so that churches and other things can be built and feed my lambs means you can stand strong. And also keep it in mind that um, in Feed My Lambs ministry, in time to come, we will be part of the great move of God where uh, across the world, four billion people shall be saved. Do not look at what's going on now. Look at what is to come. And it says he will save them. I know he will. He came, he spoke to me clearly. I'm, so, I'm sure he spoke to many other people. But he tells me in each quarter, the world will be cut into four quarters, each quarter, one billion. That's a lot of people, someone. And that's, I believe, that we'll be partaker of. And for those who are in ministry, we're all partaker of that. But he told me that, so, you know, I'm just saying it. Praise the name of Jesus. So when you give to it, that's what you're giving towards. And the gates that we will go through as the, you know, the 12 tribes, there's different gates. We are going to go through the gates that's made of sapphire. Read that one, you'll see. That is strong, how strong this ministry is. I know it because God has showed me. He's spoken to me. He's spoken to others too. The sapphire, the gates of sapphire. That is where we're going. Amen? So think on that. Give to the ministry. Give to God's work and be blessed. So now, um, I say on the website also, there's a, um, a map that you can uh, uh, click onto and then you can see how you can plan your journey to get to the ministry at any given time. So on, we, our, ministry, our service time is on a Sunday afternoon from 2.30 to about 5.30, and a Wednesday evening from 8, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And the venue is the United Reformed Church Hall, East Dulwich Grove, London, South East, 228RH. But all this is on our website, which you can see as well. So if I've gone too fast, I missed out on something, then on the website, it will bring you up to date. Praise God. So uh, that's the website. That's the service time and our email, which if you can email us if you want to, for a request. Our email is fmlministries at btinternet.com. And you can also get through to PayPal on the way and um, email site as well. So you got a two prong thing there. Praise God. So that is it for now. Maybe before the end of the show, I'll give you some more. Um, that is it for now. So thank you for listening and pray that God will um, guide you to bless us as we bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. If you're just joining us today, the message was entitled, What is Seducing You? by Pastor yeah. Winston Folks. Again, website feedmylambs.co.uk. We've got time to take your phone call. If you would like prayer today, go ahead and dial in right now at 347-215-9721. Press option one when you do. And if we have any calls there, we'll take them. If not, we'll do a little warfare prayer out there. And say, God, if there was any of that done in my history, forgive my family. Break yeah. those curses in the name of Jesus. Command those demons to go, and you'll be all right. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, that's right. You know, I was saying earlier about, um, about you know, when you go to whether it's a sorcerer or a witch or whatever, and, you know, you put your money in their hands. It's a real serious thing, you know. Where, and it's not only you want to have anything, because it's like, you you know, you, you agree to robbery, um, but you also agree to the things that those people have already done, and you don't know what they've done, as you said about generation things and that. But you don't know what these people have done, and you're going to join with them, and then you're just as guilty as they are. Because today, if, you, if a bunch of people went and stole something, if one has stolen it and the other were there, they're all deemed as people have stolen because they're all together. So it's a similar sort of thing with um, whether you're a sorcerer or your crystal gazer, that type of thing. You've got to put money to all of them. And when people put their money in, those, in the hands of those people, then you know that you're going to find it hard to keep money, if you can at all. And it's a very serious thing too, you know, uh, what comes to our ancestors and what comes to us and what we give to our children so it's good to be born again, to know the Lord, you know, because then you can begin to research. I just said about you searching your generation. Then, but with the Spirit, now you can search also and relieve yourself from the things that they have did. They did because, and what you can remember, you have done. 
um, especially, you know, because many people are in churches and they are, they've been to witches, they've been to sorcerers, put their money in their hands and they end up having no money. And they say, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm poor. Not true. <laughs> in some cases, you know, you must not put your money into the hands of evil because you'll have none. And if Christ don't come in to, to repair that, that um, bridge, it will stay that way forever. So therefore, you're a Christian and you keep on struggling and battering along, that means you're not fully giving yourself over to Christ. You know, such such a um, such a big subject. Anyway, it sure know, is. So. You know, yeah. and it, and some people know nothing about their ancestry. Maybe they were adopted, but mm-hmm. you know, we've all got something in our family tree. Now, I told you a little bit about what I where I came from. So mm-hmm. as I started to investigate, I began to uncover some things need to be dealt with. You know, Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, generational adultery, divorce, spirits go down the family line on one side. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've had two children myself. I have a uh, let me see, how old are they now? I've got a 16-year-old son named Heston. He's Mexican-American. His mother is from Mexico, so he's half Mexican, half North American. <clears throat> and then I have a daughter who is uh, 25, and um, <clears throat> her mother was born, you know, was born here in America. <clears throat> but we have a, I have a grandson, one grandson. He's African-American. <clears throat> so we have Mexican-American, African-American. <laughs> my brother married a girl from Vietnam, so I have nieces and nephews that are Vietnamese American. Their mother was wow. born in Vietnam, and uh, so we have a um, we have a melting pot of different ethnic backgrounds. And uh, you know, I praise the Lord for that. So yeah, you know, that's okay. what America is all about: people from different countries. And unless you're Native American, then you weren't. You know, your ancestry is going to be from another country. That's so, right. You're in a poverty. <laughs> you know, either the UK or Australia or Africa or, mm, you know, Europe. Yeah. But, you know, praise God that um, this is a culture, you know, um, a country of, you know, multicultural diversity. Yeah, and, um, that's great. And makes for good food when everybody gets together on a holiday. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. I mean, Britain's not far from that as well. We, You know, here where we are, I mean, you have so many different people from different places. It's incredible. It's everyone from everywhere is there. It's like you, you're saying about America, but um, I said food is great. You go to some places, the food is fantastic because you get every type of food you can think of. You lack nothing at all. If you are from the West Indies and you like, um, say, pawpaw or you like coconut, it's in abundance here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, other people can talk about their own food as well or what they like. It's here. Um, you know, so that's a good thing about people joining together, you know, and to living in, you know, because we should all live to a certain rule wherever we come from. We should, all, we should have certain rules in our hearts wherever we come from. And, um, yeah, God is, God is great. We're not meant to be on our own and just be selfish. So, yeah, it's all good. Amen. It's all good. And praise the Lord. We're going to go to the phone lines right now. We got time for you. Let's go to 781 Erie Code. 781, you're first up tonight. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's Kevin. Hey, Kevin, what state are you calling from? Oh, Massachusetts. All right. Kevin, you're on with Pastor Weston. Good afternoon. Hi, Pastor Kev. Weston. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And you? I'm, you're sounding very well. How are you? Great. Thanks. Good. Good. How can we help you? Um, I actually missed what you said earlier about seducing spirits, but um, I do fight that stuff. But I just called in for prayer, and I'm just kind of getting really fed up, you know, with the enemy. I don't want to play games anymore, and... I'm just um, want some prayer, maybe some uh, advice too. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have something, some some weird stuff. I don't know if I got. You see, when I got saved, I um, yeah, take, I, take your time. God yeah, take, set take, it up take, to where I, I originally was. Um, would yeah, you take your time? Don't, ru- don't rush. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. yeah don't. don't okay, go yeah. Ahead. Um, where I kind of. Moved. I, I started running a, a room at a boarding house, a, a guy's house, mm-hmm. and um, he kind of opened me up to um, conspiracies. And I started mm-hmm. to research things, and I started. I came out of the normal. You know, I hung out with people that didn't were intellectual or any thought about anything, and I, and, I, and the devil used that to keep me in dark my whole life. But um, mm-hmm. and then the the guy was um, homosexual. He had a false Jesus. He was into the occult, New Age, um, New Thought, Law of Attraction, top secret stuff, all sorts of weird things, different, um, uh, whatever crap. And 
I, when I finally started, you know, researching, I, I realized the world was evil, but I, I, I turned to Christ because it all made sense and the Lord was working on my heart. And I, and, um, I just was being honest, mm-hmm. being honest and truthful. And I, re- I responded to the conviction, um, and I just, um, I started telling this person, and I started believing Christ. I, I started uh, believing and, and standing up for God. And I said, no, the occult's wrong. So he got mad, and I got kicked out. So I just feel like I've been attacked by that guy. I just, I just don't know what's wrong with me. You know, I, mm-hmm. I've been on, set on fire in the Holy Spirit from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then I, I kind of foolishly kept connections with some of these bad people because I was hoping to witness to them. And then sometimes I'd hang out, I'd maybe hang out with them, but I wouldn't really want to, but I did. And then I just feel like I, I cut those relationships up. I cut those things off. I feel like it took way too long for me to repent, but I did. I'm, I won't, you know, I won't fellowship with darkness. Um, I had the de- I got so attacked by wicked spirits that I did, not that it's, I can blame anything else, but I was tempted eventually and weakened and I started, to, I used to got into some sins so that damaged me really bad. But I'm just trying to, just trying to resurrect here. I'm just trying to, to keep, and I, I stay in the joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength in the Holy Spirit. But, and, and it's just hard for me to stay there sometimes, and I just want to, I'm just pushing through. I'm just following yeah. through, and it's been good. Here, Omega Man Radio has been really good for me. Amen. And, mm. um, I feel like there's something on my head. Um, you know, it's just weird. Got these weird spirits. They're very... They try to come through my personality. I know I know how to fight all the thoughts. I've been through that. I separate myself from myself sometimes. Mm-hmm. It seems like you have to do. Um, and I just feel like there's something. I don't know if it was a witchcraft thing or something was was was, tech, was really thought out and done. I did have some guy at a at a um, charismatic kind of church. Um, I asked for help from demons because they are starting to manifest. When I when I read pigs in the parlor, I started realizing that was my issue. And they said, "Oh, don't worry about it. I was no one would help me." No one understood, you know. He said, I was in black magic before. I'm all set. Let me just put my hand on your head and pray for you. You put his hand on my head. I don't know if there's any transference there. But my point is that I feel like this. I have oppression on my head. I get headaches. I get this weird oppressive um, headache, high pressure in my head kind of feeling. It's really weird, you know. It's just kind of complicated, but not. Mm. And um, things, I, I really worship, and I really get in the spirit, and I really try to fight and stuff, and I do get... I do get really good. I do get really free, but they keep coming. They keep, they, they seem to be strong or I'm missing something or whatever, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's just a head game. Yeah. You know, sometimes, and I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Sometimes we, um, the, the small points is what we miss. And then that sort of keep us on the, the wraps of the enemy. If yeah. you put it that way, because what you have to understand is, first of all, is that, um, we spoke about the, um, when it says in um, uh, Timothy, Second Timothy chapter three about being incontinent, it's, it, it sort of mentions some of those words that um, will befall us um, if we're seduced by um, doctrines of devils and stuff like that. And that obviously that means that you, you're just not in control. So, say for instance, you're researching something, you're researching your whatever those people want you to do, and maybe the spirit of those things may um, have attacked you. Um, but because you can't mm-hmm. really, um, you can't really you you can't control them. No matter how much you research and how you think you know, they're in control. They will deal with you, you know, and, and bring serious grief to you. You know? So that that's one that's one thing that if as much as you did and as much as you um researched and for whatever reason you've done it, a lot of time those things have their own spirit and they like have um, a merry ground with us all, you know? And then you said something about someone who laid hands on you um, and they were in black magic and all that sort of stuff. Maybe they weren't quite free as well and going to lay hands on you and also transfer to you some, some oppression because um, what that evil does, uh, especially when it tries to get into you, it, it holds on to you like something holding onto your head, you know? It's like, the, like a hand holding you and it holds you and you're wondering, yeah. what is this thing? <laughs> it holds you, you know? And um, when I was um, just in ministry, something that happened to me where someone has put their hands on me and I could actually feel it, but it couldn't come in, it couldn't penetrate me, but it held on. So what I got, I got some um, uh, concentrated oil and I, I anointed myself with it and I prayed and then 
um, I just going to see his tongues and it and he just went, just let go like a, uh, like you know, all these um thing that sticks onto you and it just lets go. It was a bit like that, you know. So things can happen, and people believe that they are something which in which in which in way they are nothing because they cause grief to another human. But um, you know, in saying that, you know, obviously by what you're saying, I believe that you're going the right way. You're, you're at least you're trying to do what is right. You must stick to your guns by the things that you do, which is right. But then we're going to pray with you. Now it's got to rekindle and, you know, move certain things from you so that you can be a free man to really love your Lord and praise him and worship him. Because I, that's my heart's desire for, for myself, for you, and for anyone else that's listening, you know. Uh, as Paul would say, his heart's, and, um, heart's desire and pray for the people is that for them to be saved. Um, you know, but they're in their own little world. But, you know, we're going to move you out of that. And so God can bless you. So, Thank God for you, brother. And, you know, as we pray, we'll see what God will do for you. Brother Shani, you want to say anything before we go, before we go ahead? I think we should um, just, uh, I want to say one thing. Um, my brother Kevin, just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me. For any sins that I've committed, known or unknown. Forgive me for any sins that I have committed, and I admit it, and any known and unknown. Back to the very first thought, word, deed, and gesture. Back to the very first thought, word, word, deed, or gesture. And in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus. I renounce every ungodly soul tie with that roommate. (sighs) I renounce every ungodly soul tie with that roommate. And I bind any demon that transferred over to me when he prayed for me. And I, and I bind any demon that transferred to me when he prayed for me. And I command those demons to go now in Jesus' name. And I command those demons to go now in Jesus' name. Let me give it back to you, Brother Winston. Yes, that's good. Um, and I want you, I want you just going to say, um, Lord, Lord Jesus... Oh, Lord Jesus. Forgive me for allowing, forgive me for allowing seducing spirits. Forgive me for allowing the seducing spirits. To attack, to attack my life. To attack my life. And once again, Lord, I pray that you forgive me. And once again, I pray, Lord, that you'd forgive me. For my roommate and the things that he had enticed me to be into my roommate and the things he has enticed me to be into my roommate kevin trembley and the things he enticed me into and any of my the the past friends to forgive me for being for listening to them forgive me for listening to them and forgiving me forgive me for following their instructions forgive me for following their instructions or entertaining their ideas Mm. And any evil which I did before, which I didn't know of, and that, that, that affects me, any evil which I did before, which I know not of, which affects me. Any evil that they may have done before, I did before, that, um, did. that may affect me. Yeah. I pray for your forgiveness. I pray for your forgiveness. I pray for your deliverance. Pray for your for deliverance. deliverance. I want you to put your right hand on your, I want you to put your right hand on the top of your head, Kevin. Put your right hand on top of your head. Okay. Done that? Just say with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you for loving me. Oh, I thank you for loving me. Thank you for being there for me. I thank you for being there for me. Thank you for standing in the gap for me. Thank you for standing in the gap for me. I renounce every negative anointing upon my head. I renounce every negative I renounce anointing. Every negative anointing upon my head. I renounce. Say it three times. I, I I renounce every negative anointing. Say it three times loudly. I renounce every negative anointing on renounce my head. Every say. negative anointing. I renounce every negative anointing. I renounce any darkness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus say. Christ. Yeah, I want you just, as you've got your hands here, just breathe, take seven deep breaths in, and we command those things to go deep in, deep breaths, like a, 
in and out, just breathe it in because where you are is very clear right now and the blood is, is for you. <coughs> breathe it in and cough those things out. I said, come on, let them go. In and out, come on. Blood of Jesus. Breathe it in. Blood of Jesus. Every negative anointing must go. Blood of Jesus. Every um, attachment of my roommate that's up on me must go. Come on, breathe in that. Blood the of Jesus. of my roommate that's up on me. Get out. Just, just breathe in, brother. As I talk, let's breathe in and cough those things out. Out of your belly. Go now. Every negative anointing, every confusing anointing, every works of the devil, I bind you in Jesus' name. Begin to go now. You must go. I command the evil spirit that's attached itself to you to go now in the name of Jesus. Come on, vomit and go. Break your curse. Break your hold right now. Loose Kevin. That's it. Loose him now. In and out, brother. Blood of Jesus as you are beginning to be loosed from every attack of evil spirits. Every touch on your life of evil spirit. Re I rebuke them now in the name of Jesus. As you're breathing, I command the fire to release you oh. from every seducing spirit. Release you from every doctrines of devils. Release you from hypocrisy and lies. I release you now from the works of the devil. Come out and go now. Vomit out, I said, in Jesus' name. You loose Kevin now and go. Blood of Jesus against you. Come on, go now. The name of Jesus. Every soul tie, every tie that you have with your roommates, I break the power in the name of Jesus. Every suggestion that I've suggested to you, I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive him. Forgive him right now, Jesus, and deliver him from every works of the devil. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to say these words to me, Brother Sir Kevin. Say with me, the word of God says... Mm -hmm. Say, the word, the word of, God of God says, says he that believes on the Son of God, he, that, he who believes on the Son of God, has everlasting life. Has, uh, Everla has everlasting life. I confess and say, I confess and say it, that I, Kevin, that I, Kevin, believe on the Son of God. Believe on the Son of God. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. And I have everlasting life. And I have everlasting life. I'm getting some resistance. Yes, I, so I'm speaking to you. 90 seconds. Say, say, I am speaking to you, seducing spirits. Come on. I'm speaking to I'm, you, seducing. Mm hmm. <laughs> Say, I'm speaking I'm, to you, seducing spirits. I have everlasting life. I have everlasting life. The Lord Jesus Christ is in control of me. Say, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ is in control of me. I renounce you, seducing spirit. I renounce seconds. you, seducing spirits. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Every wicked spirit that's causing a stumbling block, I bind you now. Every wicked spirit that's causing a stumbling block in my life, I bind you no. now. Say it. Every, every wicked spirit that is causing a stumbling block, I renounce you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every stronghold that you have over me. And every every strong stronghold you have over me. I rebuke you now. I said, you're, you're no longer have any stronghold over me because I am free. I rebuke you now. You no longer have any stronghold over me. I am free. I am free. Ten I think seconds. I command, that's free is free indeed. Yes, I, I command the blood of Jesus Christ to fill this room. I command the blood of Jesus Christ to fill this room and this I, house. Yes, and as I breathe in the blood of Jesus Christ, may every devil be choked in the name of Jesus. As I breathe in the blood. As I breathe. They, yeah, in the blood. And as I breathe in the blood of Jesus Christ, all these devils will be choked up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay, breathe in seven more, one more time. Breathe, seven times. Breathe in. Every breath. In and out. Blood of Jesus. That's in and out. Blood of Jesus. Every resistant spirit, I bind you in Jesus' name. Every spirit of resistance against Kevin, I bind <sighs> you now. Breathe in, bro. That's it. Because you've coughed them out. Every resistant spirit, I bind you come out now in jesus name cough out vomit out come out of his belly now loose him in jesus name breathe in brother come on blood of jesus keep on depending on the blood of jesus 
That's it. Blood of Jesus and cough those things out. Take a deep breath and just cough them out. Let the blood of Jesus Christ make them sick. Cough them out. That's it. That's it. Out they go. Vomit them out. Come on. That's it. Violent. Don't stop. Spit them out. Let them all come out. Get some tissues and place in your hands and spit them out. That's it. Don't allow them to stand. Come on. That's it. Vomit out. That's it. Violent. That's it. All of you. Go. Yeah. You incubus and succubus also. I know you're there lying in the, in the darkness. We bind you. Come out. Vomit out. Get some tissues, brother. And spit them out in your hand. Spit them out in the tissue. In the name of Jesus, a strong tower. We command those things to go now. We command them to go. Yes, as Kevin breathe in, blood will cleanse you. The blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you. Come on, vomit out. Every one of you. Every stumbling block. Every stubborn spirit. Keep every negative on. anointing. Out they go. The name of Jesus. Come on, keep on, brother. Keep on until they all leave you. Let the covenants be broken. That's it. Let the spells be broken. Let the curses be broken right now. Any form of witchcraft. This, yes, any one of them. Any form of witchcraft. This yoke. Yeah, the there you go. The the stuff on my head and in me. Yeah, breathe in. Mm, get off and loose yourself out. from them. Come on. Cast them out. Let them come out now in Jesus' name. Let them out now in the name of Jesus. Let them go now in the ah. name of Jesus. Don't talk, brother. Just, just breathe in the blood. Let the blood cleanse you. Let the fire of God cleanse you wherever you are right now. Be cleansed in Jesus' name. We won't stop until that devil is gone. The heaviness, you must have the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness to give you joy. In the name of Jesus, that is an oh. anointing. Yeah, it's got to go. And whatever is attaching itself to you, we command those things to loose you and go now. Mm. Whatever is attaching itself to you and try to cause you grief or harm, seducing spirit, doctrines of devils that's coming to your life we bind those things right now in the name of jesus christ and we command the blood to cleanse you right now breathing brother some more blood of jesus breathing some more brother shining you're jumping us yeah what's wrong demon are you a little frustrated today we bind you in jesus name i place you in the judgment of the lord jesus christ unloose the angels of god in the name of jesus right to where you're at to begin to attack you angels encircle these demons and begin to sort them in the name of jesus come out of there right now Loose him in the name of Jesus. We break your power and your grip off of him in the name of Jesus. We break that yoke off of your shoulders in Jesus' name. We break that devil off of your head. Come out in the name of Jesus. Loose him. Demon, we got power and authority over you. The word says, you are subject unto us. Jesus says, I give you all power and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall any wise harm you. You come out right now in the name of Jesus. We're attacking you from our position of authority. Seated with the Lord Jesus Christ in the highest of the heavens. We know we bind you. We rebuke uh, you and command you to go in Jesus' name. Angels, attack these spirits. Come out. Yeah, in the name of Jesus. Every spirit, we're talking to you. Go in the name of Jesus right now. Loose them and come out right now. Spirit of confusion. Every unclean spirit that transferred in through your roommate. Go in the name of Jesus. We break your power. Come out right now. Move. In the name of Jesus. Yes. We in break that of curse Jesus. of lust in the name of Jesus. All lust, go. In the name of Jesus, move. <laughs> lust of the eyes, come out. Lust of the flesh, go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Any spirit of masturbation, oh, oh, no. we break your power. Come out in Jesus' name. Any sexual confusion that jumped on you from that guy, come out in the name of Jesus. We break every ungodly soul tie connected to you. Close the door, <laughs> little demons. Come out in the name of Jesus right now, Close demon. Go. Like Angels choke these cash. demons out. We cut that attachment, that demonic attachment, in the name of Jesus. We blow up that bridge between your soul mm -hmm. and anybody else's in the name of Jesus. Close that door. Every demon, we're talking oh, no, to you. No. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go to where Jesus is sending you. Some of you are going to Tartarus tonight. Go in the name of Jesus. Loose them. We call for the fire of God to come down and roast you right now. Fire in the name of Jesus. Man. Take it over, Brother Winston. Yes, and the, the abusing spirit. Ah. You, yeah, you abusing spirit. You you abuse you abuse them from being a child and just being abused. I bind you in Jesus' name. You come out of him in Jesus' name. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, you come <clears throat> out. You spirit of abuse. You come out in Jesus' name. You spirit of abuse. You come out now in the name of Jesus Christ. That is why a lot of the young men are sexually unbalanced. And I say in Jesus' name, you oh. wicked spirit. Yes, you will come out in Jesus' name. You will come out in the name of Jesus and we bind you and release the blood of Jesus Christ upon you and cause the angel of God to chase you and never to give you rest until you leave in the name of Jesus. You are dark angels when I command the, the angel of the Lord to put light upon you and roast you and cast you out in the name of Jesus. You come out. 
every spirit of abuse, every spirit that makes you feel like you have nobody or even been an orphan, I command you to leave in Jesus' name. You loose and go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes, you come out in Jesus' name. Yeah, you come out in the name of Jesus. Woman, I come out in the name of Jesus. You come out in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ is against you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we shall cast these devils out because we believe. We believe in the name of Jesus yeah. Christ, devil, and we cast you out in Jesus' name. According to the word of God, we cast you out. We use the blood of Jesus Christ to soak you. We use the blood of Jesus Christ against you, yeah. and you will yeah. lose now. Devils. It is a perilous time for you at this time. You will come out in the name of Jesus. You will cause him Amen. to be lovers of himself. I said no. He will be a lover of Christ Jesus. Boasting, you wicked boasting spirit, proud spirit, spirit of blasphemy. We bind you and cast you <laughs> out. Yet unthankful, yeah, denying your parents, coming against all the will and purpose of God, hiding in the background hiding under certain things we break you now you are a truce breaker we bind you and cast you out you are a false accuser and we come against you and you are incontinent that's what we say because you have no control over kevin loose him now loose him and go according to the word of god loose him we have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me us we come against you now in the name of jesus christ the spirit of the lord god is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captive kevin is captivated oh. by you oh, i'm preaching deliverance now come out of him in jesus name take some breath in brother take in the breath god, of god yes take in the breath of god mm. come brother and be free totally take in the breath of god and be free totally Abusing spirit. Have you been abused? Who has abused you? Forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. Who has molested you? Forgive them. Who has made you feel as if you're nobody? Forgive them. Forgive them. As you forgive them, those spirit has to leave you in Jesus' name. They have to go in the name of Jesus. Yeah. They have to go in the name of Jesus. And as according to this prayer, my brother, let's make sure we're on the right track here. Have you ever been abused by anybody? Yes. Uh -huh. So that's the big, that's the, that's the big key. That's the big key. I knew it because it was revealed to me. <clears throat> you, do you mind saying who, who it is that done it? Who abused um, you? Um. Well, it, um, I, I, I was kidnapped. I was kidnapped from my dad, so I didn't have a father figure, and then I felt unwanted. My mom wasn't very good at being so. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I had a. It was a little bit bleak with my mom in a sense. I don't know. And then I just felt kind of on my own a little bit. There's orphan kind of spirits, and then I also I was molested um, when I was three years old by some wicked boys next door that were adopted, that were you know really bad kids, um, and then no one believed me, and then my mom beat me up. My mom went into a demonic trance one time and flipped because she thought I was molesting my sister, and I wasn't, and she beat me up until I passed out, so it was pretty bad. And then there was just there was just so, there was just it just wasn't loving, and it was just a lot of stuff. But yeah. I forgive my mom and uh, yeah, forgive them all. Forgive my dad. Mm -hmm. Forgive them I all, do. brother. <clears throat> and because you know, I just say this to you that one day, everyone has to give an account. Your dad has to give an account for himself. Your mom, yourself, have to give an account for yourselves. But what you want to do is make sure that when your time come to give an account, um, you are already given it here by adhering yeah. to the word of and God. I have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, but, and I'm trying not to be the victim and remember these things and try to say, you know, I'm just advantaged in this and that, but I, I will try to walk forward. And I just, no, you don't have to, you don't, no, you don't have to say I, that. There's, well, there's an evil memory recall. I have to, I shut, I try, I'm trying to shut down. There's an evil memory recall. recall. Yeah, the only, the only, so what you must do, don't, never be afraid of it. But what you have to do is allow Jesus Christ yeah. to bring comfort to all of it. Don't, don't think that you must shut this down or shut that down. Let Christ shut it down for you. Let him move out those things for you. Because when he does it, you'll be so comfortable. It doesn't matter about what anyone says. You're so comfortable. It's incredible. So don't ever think that, you know, oh, because this happened to me, I'm going to try and keep it out. No, no. If it, if it comes up, let it come up and let it just let it leave. Um, because it's a spirit and it must go. I don't, because he revealed to me that the abusing 
is is a stronghold down there, even though you might try to put it aside. You have no power to put it aside, but Christ has. So you've got to allow him to um, make you comfortable that even if you even if it comes up in your mind, it won't bother you. A lot of people who yeah. are orphaned and homeless and that type of thing, it bothers them. You know, so you have to come to a place where even if you hear it, it won't bother yeah. you because you have, you have to go back and help others. So if it bothers you, then you can't do it, can you? You understand? Amen. And and I try to if I get re, if I um if I get a recall, mm-hmm. maybe the devil's trying to do. I try to turn it for good and, and just say praise God, I've overcome that. Yeah, but remember what I said. I don't, if, to praise him. I don't know if you heard earlier on when I said some people have certain things that happen to them and they start worrying. It's oh, this and that, but. It's only because the Spirit of God is upon you why something will attack you to try to bring you back into a devilish thing. So then you thank God yeah. for having his, his Spirit being on you. You know? So there's great um, future for you, my brother. But um, just allow Christ to, to make you comfortable, not you thinking, well, this happened, I'm going to do that or this. No. Let Him do it for you. Let Him bring it to a place of forgiveness. Yeah, um, I, I'm trying to be too um, intellectual about things, even with right. deliverance. You know, I'm trying you to be strong willpower, try to overthink things, try to be in charge, but I, I'm trying to let go. You're incontinent, brother. You can't do it. You know, you're incontinent yeah. because you like words, don't you? You know, you can't do it. You have no control over that. <laughs> right? But the one who has, give it to him. Amen? And that is why I have to think, and Brother Shannon also have to think the same way. We have a journey. We've traveled the journey. Yes, we're not, we're not there yet, but... Uh, as we help you, God will help us and help us to do what is right because it's not something that we can do. It's what he does and allow us to be partaker of, you know? So, uh, I just have to to re- sorry. Amen. Yeah. Thanks. So yeah, yeah, we, um, touched that, but obviously there's more to go and we let, we know we, it'd be good for us to pray some more with you at a certain given time, because um, that way we can, you know, just keep on attacking these things and cause you to be free so you can be used by God and um, use in the most powerful way, uh, Brother Kevin. So the, the future is quite bright. So don't worry yourself too much. Just allow God to do it for you. Um, anything else to add, Brother Shannon? No, sir. I would... Um, Shannon knows me, so... Absolutely. Kevin's a long-time listener. And okay. uh, Kevin, resist the devil, and he's going to flee, my brother. Don't give up. Uh-huh. That's right. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you, Brother Kevin. Thank you for calling in, Kevin. Thanks. We have a prayer request from Sister Lupita in Chula Mm -hmm. Vista, California. Mm -hmm. Uh, She asked if you would lift her up and her job and financial situation. Uh, She told me that uh, she had lost her job for her stance for Christ. And so she has been putting in applications and asking God to open up a door for um, a new job and uh, needs a, a financial miracle there. A single mother, um, and so she's asking uh, if you if we could pray for her today. Sure, sure. First of all, I want to thank God for Sister Lupita. I've had many um, uh, contacts on our Facebook and so on with her. We see all these things, Sister. We'll get around to answering you properly um, in time to come, but um, you are part of the first of um, Omega Man Radio for me anyway. And um, we have you in our mind, and the prayer of God will bless you. But remember this, that um, the Bible says, the gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Maybe when, because things have changed, maybe God has something better for you. You may be thinking less of yourself than what God wants to put you into. So maybe you have to come into a place where you can see eye to eye with God. So we're going to pray for you, sister. We're going to pray for God to also reveal in a dream to you what it is or where you're going, how you're going to go about this thing. And then when you see this thing, write them down and wait for them to manifest. So, Father, we thank you at this moment. We put um, our dear sister, Lapita, before you, Lord, and she had suffered for you and um, she's done a great thing. I know, Lord, you reward her for her, her stance for you. You said, Lord, um, there are many in the city, city that is for you than those who are against you. So, Lord, there are many people where she lives that were for you than those who are against you. So I commit Sister Lapita to the people who are for you and you are for them and to look after our sister and to keep her safe in their arms because they will keep her as you would keep her. So, Father, we commit Sister Lapita to you and pray, God, that the, what she has lost she would have realized that um, you have something better for her. 
So Lord, I pray as she listens right now that she will receive the better things that you have for her. A be- is a, Christ is a better sacrifice than the sacrifice of um, bullocks and goats and so on that cannot um, suffice the person who comes to it. But Christ is the ultimate. He is a better sacrifice. You come to him and it shall be well. And we are with Christ and it shall be well. So Sister Lepita, I commit you to the blood of Jesus Christ. I commit you to the word of God. And whatever the word of God says, the Holy Spirit of God will also make it manifest for you. Just fear thou not, for the Lord is with you. Be not dismayed, for he is your God. He will strengthen you, he will help you, he will uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. You are a daughter of Abraham, and you deserve the, 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 the children's bread. You deserve your healing, you deserve your deliverance, and you deserve your job. Whoever that's in this world that's put a stumbling block against your um, job and you working, I bind them now in Jesus' name. I command a job to be open for you, to bless your home and your children, and to give him to those who are around you. We commit you to the blessings of God. We commit you to the windows of heaven that can pour out upon you and give you a blessing that you cannot begin to understand. Praise the name of Jesus. We commit you to the sister. We break down the barriers. We break down the bars of destruction. Who, whatever um, has come against you, whoever has spoken against you, we condemn right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You not only lose the job that you're in, but they're speaking against every job that you may have. We come against those now. We break the power of those speech that was spoken against you in the name of Jesus. The word says, no weapon is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Condemn them now, sister. All the tongues that are written against you, all those who have um, chased you out of your job, condemn them now in the name of Jesus because the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, are not fleshly, but they're godly to the pulling down of strongholds. Pull down the strongholds right now, sister, and break the power of darkness because you're not in darkness, you're light. You're the children of light. And I commit you to the light as he's in the light. Praise the name of Jesus. Father, bless Sister Lupita as we pray. Give her a true breakthrough, Lord. Give her a testimony that she will write to the station or to the radio broadcast and say, look, this God has done this for me. What a wonder. Thank you, Jesus, for Lupita, Sister Lupita. I know, God, you're going to bless her now because we're prayed and we pray in agreement. Me and Brother Shannon, uh, yes. we pray in agreement. So, so I should it be in Jesus' name. If you want to say anything, it's Brother, it's up to you. Oh, I yeah. agree. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. If you're just tuning uh, in, we're live with Pastor Winston. Folks, Brother Winston, you have time to take one more call? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Let's go to an unlisted number out there. Caller, you're in the queue. Hello. Hello. Hi, that's Can you. Can you hear me? Yes. What's your name? This is Maria, Brother Shannon. Hey, Maria, you're on with Brother in Winston. West Coast. In Wisconsin? No, West Coast, Washington State. Oh, Washington State. Hello, Maria. Welcome to the program. How can we be of service today? Um, I actually, I was listening to the deliverance that he did for the other gentleman, and I had been talking to my mother. We've been kind of comparing notes. I had just finished listening to um, Sister Carla, and I had been doing soul tie breakings, but apparently it is very different when you have had molestation, rape, incest, and that kind of stuff. And I, I've spoken about my situation about being raped um, while I'm asleep, and multiple people are doing it, satanic rituals. And I was starting to feel like, what's wrong? Why am I getting raped in this process that this has been happening? I had a memory that surfaced up that at age two, I was raped, and it was at my godfather's house. And I just spoke that to my mother that I didn't even know about that memory until this has happened. So a part of me is full of rage, like, why do I have to continue being with trauma happening. I've received counseling and all kinds of stuff for other things, but I'm getting tired of my body being violated. Um, My mother has been raped 20 times since age 14 and 15, and she has a lot of fear. Um, I've forgiven her for a lot of things, Uh, and there is also a lot of occult. I was actually uh, offered to Satan by a family member, so I've been told that even in generations, we thought it was um, my mother's grandma 
and it was my uh, her mother's mother. So it wasn't my grandma Tina that did that. She didn't like that. So I'm going like, God, do I even have a chance? Um, there's some people that don't even want to touch me because they see a cult, even though I'm not involved in it. I'm not doing it. I still have that mark. I don't pray for her. And it really is bothering me. It makes me feel um, like God doesn't love me. I I doubt. I do have a trust issues um, because of that factor. I've been pretty much on my own. I'm not around family members. I actually had one of the same people that had been breaking and entering is helping uh, other males to rape me and women uh, to say that I deserve everything that's been happening to me. And so... I question, like, when is this going to end? I did everything that I was suggested by the police to do. I am calling it. They choose not to. It's like they're not even listening to me. Like, there's a dead, dumb spirit. Um, I know that there is one particular family member that said that she will continue doing these things to the whole family until the day that she dies. And I'm going, like, does she have to live, God, for her to continue doing this? Um... So I'm, I'm, I need some more prayers and uh, more deliverance. I have I don't know what else. Do I need to renounce, break? Mm. Yeah. So, um, so uh, sister Tina, you said about being raped. Uh, so let's get let's get this clear. Yes. Uh, is it um a spiritual rape or a physical rape? Um, is it, did, did I come to you when you're sleeping? Very... Sorry, it's it Maria, is. right? They're Maria? Physical, physical, physical. Okay, like someone break into your home and just rape you, or someone come to your house and rape you. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and actually, the same people that are raping me are also raping the same woman that said that, that I deserve the rape. And she doesn't oh. even know that it's the okay. same folks that she's helping for them to rape me. The thing is that we have in this building about 20 women that are single and we're mm. talking about this used to be a community for seniors mm. and disabled i came here because i'm a disabled veteran mm. and i have been targeted from the time i got here oh. to present and i have experienced every form of shape that they can do i mean i can even maria let me uh, stop you there for a second are you in the same building as when you called some months ago or did you get out of there moving with your mom? Yeah. You, you got out of that first place? No, my, no, no, no. Um, I, my mom doesn't even have her own place either. Okay, so She's in other words... here in the state of Washington. Oh, I misunderstood you. I thought you said you were with your mother. So are you uh, Are you in that no, same... No, no, I call my mom on the phone and we okay. keep on, you know, we talk. Got it. She doesn't, she's never had any deliverance. But let me she ask you a really question. about her trauma. Let me ask you a question. I wanted to determine some. Are you still in the same building as you were about six months ago where you were having um, people coming in and, uh, you know, attacking you while you're sleeping? Yes. Okay, so you're in the same building. Okay, I just wanted there's to a particular stay in the context. The, the particular program mm -hmm, said that you have to have a police report. They're not going to let you go out. I Even remember. Even though I had somebody advocate for me, yeah. it was an ex-police officer. And they told him the same thing, and he, he told him everything that was happening. Well, let me ask and you another question. Like, no. I understand all that. So uh, that brought me up to speed. Are you in any kind of church fellowship right now where you can be with some believers on the weekend? I can't even go because I don't even have the keys to my apartment. I don't have the money. I normally go out when I have uh, a house sitter um, to do what I need to do and have to cram it as much as possible. You don't, you don't have keys to your um, front door? I listen to your guys' radio. Even No. I don't well, even have the money. I'm like $20,000 in debt because when I moved here and trying to secure myself and kind of get whatever the police officer said to do, I, don't, I Let me did. stop you there. I don't understand and something. Why don't you have keys to your front door? Because they were, when they come in, they're coming in through a sliding door that is not custom made. They just threw a standard door. They would break in, and they, this is for everybody on the first floor. The keys were taken, and they made copies to the key. The lock that I have, none of the locks that you buy at a home depot are really secured because you can get to buy a lock that's anti-pick and anti-bump. 
Okay, well, you know what I think we need to do is pray. Let me give it back to you, Brother Winston. Yes, yes, I, I, I think um, we, we should pray. But um, obviously you don't go to church, you say. You know, you, you can't get out your building to go to church and so on. Um, but um, listening to uh, like Omega Man Raiden, that, that, I think that'd be a good thing to, for the moment to help you to, first of all, get understanding and just to help yourself so that these things has to stop. Um, and uh, I'll, 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 have you got a Bible? Um, at home with you? Yeah, I got a Bible. There was good, also good. another thing that I was told that there was a lot of altars being erected on my name. Animals were sacrificed and children were sacrificed. That really bothers me a lot. Yeah, yeah but you see... They would go but, to that extreme. Well, those things are devilish, aren't they? So you can, easily, you can easily put a stop to that because it's devilish and God has made a way for you to overcome the devil. You know, um, but not to be overcome in your mind by the situation, just to trust somebody. Because if you could trust somebody, then you would have um, overcome. So it's about trusting the Lord so you can overcome. Um, so this, this, especially this right thing, it's got to stop. All it's got to stop in the name of Jesus. Um, so we're going to pray and ask God to come into this situation. Are you ready, sister? Yes, I'm ready. Praise the name of Jesus. Um, uh, first of all, I want to just um, say a small prayer with me. Okay, just, just say to me, okay. Lord Jesus, yes. so Lord, Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you for love. I thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving, thank me. You for loving me. Even though I don't understand your love, I thank you for loving me. Even though I don't understand your love, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for my life. I thank you for my life. I thank you for the life of my mother. I thank you for the life of my mother. And my other family members as well. I thank you for their lives. And my, um, and my other family members. And I thank you for their lives. I come before you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I confess, renounce, and repent of all my sins. I confess and renounce of all my sins. I repent of all my sins. I, I repent I, of all my sins. Say, so say, I confess, renounce, and repent of all my sins. I confess, renounce, renounce and repent of all my sins. In words, in thought, or in deeds. In words, in thought, in words, or in deeds. In thought, or in deeds. Any sins that I've committed. Any sins that I've committed. From I was in my mother's womb. From within my, my mother's womb until this day. Until this day. Whatever I've done, there's a there's a hindrance or a stumbling block. Whatever is a is a, is a hindrance or stumbling block. I I've repent been, of it. I repent of it now. I repent of it now. I repent the, of it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your word says that I should forgive, that I may be forgiven. Your word says that I should, Your I should forgive, that I, uh, that I should forgive, that I may be the forgiven. Your word says that I should forgive, should forgive, so I may be forgiven. Lord Jesus, Lord forgive. Jesus, Lord Jesus, make Lord that Jesus. make that real for me Lord now. Jesus. Make that Lord real for Jesus. me. Say, make that real for me now. Make that real for me now. I forgive. Every person who has sinned against me. I forgive every person who has sinned against me. I forgive every single person from as long as I can I remember. Those who have hurt me. Every single person that yeah. has hurt me as, uh, as far as I can remember. Lord, I'm in agreement with your pastor and ministers. I'm in agreement, Lord, I'm with, in your agreement with your pastors and, and your ministers. Your word says, if two of us should agree on earth as touching anything we should ask, your word says, if two of us should agree on earth as touching your anything, two, mm -hmm. your word says, says that if two of us, two or more, shall agree, should agree on earth as touching anything we should ask, on earth to and touch anything that we should ask, it shall be done for us by the Father which is in heaven. It should be done for us for as us. fathers in heaven. Father, I, I believe your words. 
Father, I believe your words. I'm in agreement with your ministers. And I'm in agreement with your ministers. I put before you, Lord. I put before you, Lord. That wicked spirit of rape and molestation. That wicked spirit of rape and molestation. I pray, O oh God, that you will cover me with your blood. I pray, O oh God, that you will cover me in your blood. And deliver me from the spirit of rape and the wicked and deliver me from the spirit of spirit rape of rape and the wicked and, and a wicked spirit and the wicked spirit of and the, the wicked name, spirits in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every spiritual attack every spiritual attack that will that will attack me sexually that would attack me sexually when I'm in my bed. I'm asleep when I'm asleep. When I'm, when I'm in asleep. my bed. Asleep. When I'm asleep. I, re I rebuke those spirits in the name of Jesus. I rebuke those spirits in the name of Jesus. And those wicked spirit of rape that entered my life when I was two years old. That wicked spirit of rape that and entered those, my life. Mm -hmm. Say. And that wicked spirit Wic of rape that entered into my life. When I was years two old. years old. I renounce that spirit in Jesus. Years old. I renounce that spirit in, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I come against. I come against every spirit that will molest me sexually. Incubus, succubus. I come against I, you all. Yeah. I come Say, against the spirit of incubus, succubus. I come against you of all. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I command you to begin to manifest and come out of my life. And I command that you manifest and come out of my life. And I command every door leading to my apartment to be covered by the angels of God. I command every door leading to my apartment. I command every door that leading into my apartment. To be covered by angels. To be, to be covered by angels. The angels of God. The angels of God. To keep me safe from the wicked spirit of rape. The wicked spirit to keep me safe from the wicked spirit of rape. And Lord Jesus, turn around my situation. And Lord Jesus, turn around my situation. Cause me to be a fit human being to contribute to my life. Cause me to be what was that part? A fit, a fit human being to contribute to my life. A, a person. Fit human being to contribute to my life. Lord Jesus, I put all things into your hands. Lord Jesus, I put everything into your hands. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot um, overcome these spirits on my own. I cannot, Lord, I cannot overcome, overcome. these spirits on my own. Overcome. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Lord Jesus, strengthen me now. Lord Jesus, strengthen me now. To be an overcomer. To be an overcomer. I come. I confess and say that I am the head and not the tail. I confess that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am above and not beneath. I will lend and not borrow. I will lend and not borrow. And the, the, my face has the light of Christ on it now. My face has the light of Christ on it. My on face it. has the life of Christ on it now. And the gate of hell cannot overcome me. And the gate of hell cannot overcome me. I've suffered upon this point. I've suffered upon this point. I have suffered unto this point. But from this point onwards, I shall be a winner. From this point on, I shall be a winner. I will not be confused. I will not be confused. I will not be negative. I will not be negative. I will not speak against myself. I will not speak against myself. I won't allow anyone to touch me again without my consent. I will not. 
I will not allow anyone to touch me without my consent. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Hear my prayer. Hear my prayers. And come to my rescue. And come to my rescue. Every time I've been raped. Every time I've been raped. Every time I've been raped. Bitterness. Every time I've been raped. Bitterness. Bitterness. Um, um, develop in my heart. Bitterness develop in my heart. Bitterness develop in my heart. Lord Jesus, forgive me for that. Lord Jesus, forgive me for that. And that family member who had cursed me and said that I will always, I'll, yeah. Was, yeah, that's cursed me. I rebuke and destroy that curse now in the name of Jesus. I come against that curse now. As that family member that has cursed me, I come, up, I come against that curse, curse now. A word, family member, now. Yeah, I break the curse. I break the curse. I do not believe her curse. I do not believe I'm cursed. And, and every message of Satan from that curse. And every message from Satan from that curse. Every messenger of Satan from that curse. Every, every messenger. messenger from Satan from that curse. I put a wall of fire against you. The Holy Ghost fire is against you. I put a wall of fire. Oh, I put a, a wall of fire against, against you. you. The Holy Ghost fire is against you. Against the Holy and, Ghost fire is against you. And the God that answers by fire is against you. And the God that answers by fire is against you. And it will destroy all your works in Jesus' name. And it will destroy all your works in Jesus' name. I come against the thief and the destroyer. I come against the thief and the destroyer. Those who will break into my house. Those who will break into my house. I come against them now. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. I come against them now. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I leave this prayer into the hands of the Lord. And I release this prayer into the hands of the Lord. Holy Spirit of God, come and touch me now and deliver me. Holy Spirit of God, come and deliver me. Raise up your right hand in here. Just raise up your hand and your right hand, sister. And he probably place it on your head or something. Yeah? And I just want you yeah. to take in, just take in seven deep breaths, deep ones, as if you were running, you know, you're up. Just take them in because I believe where you are now, the blood of Jesus is, is begin to cleanse where you are. And your what you're breathing now is just pure air from the kingdom as you breathe in what is not in the kingdom has to leave breathe in the blood of Jesus sister I commit you to those prayers right now breathe in the blood in and out I command the spirit of rape I command you vicious sexual spirit I command you go now come on you go now vomit out of her come on be broken you and your filthiness and your stain and your destruct destroying wickedness go now I should breathe in you come out vomit out come out of our belly come out of our belly you bitterness be broken now. The spirit of bitterness, the spirit of rape, and uh, the spirit of confusion. Come on, loose now, loose and come out. Vomit and come out in Jesus' name. We come against you, we bind you, and we cast you down. Whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth shall be loose in, loose in heaven. I bind you now. As this lady breathes in, I command you to leave now. Come on, sister, in and out, blood of Jesus, cough out of your belly. Let them come out now. Do not allow them to stay with you and uh, that you can be an overcomer. I pray that you'll have a mustard seed. That's it. Come on. Get them out. I pray you'll have a violently devil. I don't want to have a, come on. Violently come out now. You wicked sexual spirit. We bind you in Jesus' name. Come out. Vomit out of our stomach. Spit out. You come out. You have your you you, you not root or branch shall be left of you. You there shall be neither root nor branch left of you. I bind you. Come out in Jesus' name. Vomit out, sister. Let it all come out. Let the sexual rape, uh, spirit of rape go now in the name of Jesus. Controlling spirit of the devil, seducing spirit of the devil. Come out. Devilish doctrines. Come out. All devilish doctrines against you. Be broken now. Be broken now. That's it. Violently. You come out. Out of our belly. Violently. Come out in Jesus' name now. That's it. Vomit right out. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Be gone. All of you. So that this woman can be free. In and out. Blood of Jesus. In and out. Blood of Jesus. In and out. Blood of Jesus. Brother, you want to jump in there? Anything else you want to put to this? Let's go. Come. Every mm -hmm. unclean spirit that is tormenting your mind, 
We place you in the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ. Command you go in the name of Jesus right now. We command any spirits that attack the mind, go in the name of Jesus right now. Lord God, we ask that you would go in and touch her right now. Touch her, Lord. Heal her where she has been traumatized in the past, Lord. Touch those areas in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit that attacks your mind, go in the name of Jesus Christ right now. We break all spirits of confusion off of you. Every spirit that came in through trauma, come out now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to your mind in agreement with Brother Winston. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Double minus, go in the name of Jesus Christ. We cast down every vain imagination in the mighty name of Jesus. Mind, be healed and restored in the name of Jesus. Take it over, Brother Winston. Yeah, and the spirit of rape, you, you have to go in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of rape, you go. Every spirit of loneliness and of um, lust and having no purpose, yeah, I command you, deaf, dumb, and blind spirit, the, the spirit will mute you. I command those things to go now and come alive in Jesus' name. Vomit out, devils, come out, especially you, spirit of rape. You, spirit of violent, violence and attacking, um, spirit of anger, uh, vomit out now in the name of Jesus. Come on, go. Spirit of anger, you go now. Violent, angry spirit, that's it. Vomit out, you wicked spirit, we'll bind you. We have no mercy. Come on, open you. Vomit out. You leave now in the name of Jesus. And those who give those things that are rights to attack you, we'll bind them now. Come out in Jesus' name. All of you, leave and go. All curse, all word curse against you, be broken now. Every negative anointing be broken now. Every altar that's been built up by anybody to put your name upon it and to curse you, be broken down now, be caught a fire and be destroyed now. And those who are destroying your life, let the spirit within them be destroyed now. Every wicked and evil spirit that were used against you, let them be defeated now in the name of Jesus. All of you be defeated now. Yes, the gates of hell cannot prevail. You are defeated now. The weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of you, wicked spirit. Come out in Jesus' name. Be bound and come out. Vomit out in Jesus' name. Now, 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 now. From the time you were from your two years old, now, 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 the, the trauma, the fear that's um, built up in your heart from your two years old. Be free now. Whom the son is set free is free indeed. Be free and let the wicked spirit go now. And you've been raped and molested so many different times. Lord, deliver her from the wicked sexual evil molestation spirit lord that will come against her and those who have cursed her by by committing her to rape you'll be broken now come on all of you be broken whoever's committed you to the spirit of rape be broken now let their devices be turned to naught let them be turned upside down let them be cast headlong they will come in one way and flee seven way let all those spirits are congregating against you that join up against you let them bite and devour one another. All evil spirits, I say to you now, bite and devour one another. Come out of our life in Jesus' name. Go now. You go. Bite and devour one another. Turn against each other. Just like when Jehoshaphat had the problem with the Assyrians, they turn against each other. You turn against each other and destroy each other. Now, the name of Jesus and come out of this woman's life. We bind you all. We bind you all. And Lord, heal our body. That's it. Vomit out. You are like, vomit out in the name of Jesus. Vomit out, you wicked spirit. The spirit of Jezebel that used against you. Vomit out. You are nothing but fit to vomit, Jezebel, and to come out like a dog. Come out in Jesus' name. Be broken, I said. All of you, every foul spirit, every wicked spirit that join himself to you. That's it. Vomit out violently. Be destroyed totally. Never to look back this way anytime soon. Receive a millstone around your neck and be joined to the bottom of the sea if you can find it. Go now in the name of Jesus. Be sunk. All of you. Every one of you are coming out. Hold each other's hands and all of you receive millstones and go to the midst of the sea and sink. Never to look back this way again. Ever. Because where you're going is bottomless and you'll never land. Come out. You do not touch God's anointed. Touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophet no harm. Anyone that the Lord has chosen, anyone the Lord has blessed, do not touch them. Do not touch them. Your world will be turned upside down. Satan, I turn your world upside down. And you bride of Satan, being offered to Satan as a bride, 
We rebuke you in Jesus' name. The only person she's married to is Jesus Christ. The only person she's joined to is Jesus Christ. She's no longer joined to you, Satan. Tell me don't come out. Take all your works. I said in Jesus' name, take everything that you have and go. I say, Bomita, pack your load and go. Pack out of our house now in the name of Jesus. All of you, Satan, bride of Satan, will release fire upon you, Satan. Take your hands of God, children. You come in one way, you shall flee seven ways. Fear thou not, he says, I am with thee. Be not dismay, I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will help you and uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. God is for you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Spirit of rape. Uh, spirit of dedication. Every spirit that's been used against you to dedicate you to Satan. All of you, be broken now. Be very hot and let the fire burn you. Just like the day. Yes, yes, you'll be burnt up. That's a day like the day you'll be cast into the fire. And you, wicked spirit, have a chief seat at the front of the fire. You'll be the first one to be put in the lake of fire. Yeah, receive it now and be bound and broken. Come on, all of you. Dedication, Satan, altars, we bind you all in Jesus' name. Whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever I loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We Amen. bind you, Satan. You vomit that violently. Come out of the life of this woman now. That's it. Vomit out in the name of Jesus. Breathe in some more, people, young lady. Um, receive the power of God. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. That's it. All, all of you. All of you go now. Any sickness you have, respiratory sickness, go now also. If you have that, I, I believe you have, let it go. Come on. That's one that's gone. Mm -hmm. That's one that's gone. A hammer has been nailed into uh, three of those spirits. They've been na a hammer has been nailed into them. A hammer from God has been, he's the hammer that breaks the rock to pieces. That's what he does. And cause the region in darkness. That's it. Cause you to fight against each other. Devour one another. Bite and devour one another. And all be destroyed in Jesus' name. All of you. Every single one. Devils, I have no mercy upon you because you have none on me. I rebuke you and cast you down. Jesus says, the, the centurion said, Lord, only speak. And my servant shall be healed. According to the word of God, I shall only speak and you shall be healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Every memory of being molested, every deep-seated things have been molested. The fear they placed into you, the anger and thinking that you are worthless and all those things turn around now. Vomit out all of you. Vomit out all of you. Give her a new day, Jesus. Give her a new day. Give her a new light. I'll cause her to see things different now. All blindness, all darkness, be uncovered in Jesus' name. All of you, all blindness, all darkness, be uncovered now and walk in the light as he's in the light. Be uncovered. Salvation is light. You have salvation. You have light. Seeing then that this ministry has come to you, faint not, but just renounce all the hidden things, all things that are hidden against you now. Be revealed. May the Lord show you things in vision that you've never seen before. Because what he has for you, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the things he had prepared for you, sister, because you love him. So this is the beginning of the glory of God for your life. I command the spirit of rape. Everyone that tried to break into your house, may their hands and whatever they used to break into your house be muted, be stunted, or even be broken. They cannot touch your house any longer. They are out there, there. They cannot touch you because of God anointed. Bind them and cast them out. Attack them when they, if they ever come near you. Because Jesus Christ is Lord. And I commit you, sister, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you'll ring in again when we, and, uh, earlier on in the program that we can have some more time with you so God can continue to bring you through. But I suggest to you to read your word. Read your word. Read your word. The deliverance won't stop now, sister. It will continue maybe for days. Can you hear me? It will continue for days. That's it. Now they go. They won't stop coming out. There's millions of them. That's it. All of them. There's millions of them. They won't stop coming out. They will continue for days. I commit you to the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Brother Shani, you want to say anything else? Are we, I mean, Praise the Lord. Time is sister, the thank time you is for running. calling in today. God bless you. And thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate you. May the Lord bless you over abundantly. We receive that. God bless you, Sister Maria. 
Thank you. Yeah, and please ring again. Uh, please ring again so we can have some more time with you. Because time is running out for us. But um, yeah, and give us a testimony because things are going to be different for you now. Amen. If you're coming in late tonight, we're going to have this up in the archives uh, here in about an hour. I want to encourage you to go check this out. Before you close in prayer with a benediction, Brother Winston, I want to thank you for your service here and all the work you and Sister Brenda are doing. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to tell people how they can make contact with you, how they can support your ministry, please. Amen. Thank you. So we are, we are called FML, Feed My Lambs Ministry, Feed My Lambs Healing and Deliverance Ministry. That's who we are already. And um, well, I'll give you our email. Our email is FML ministries at btinternet.com that is our email address and you can also get through to paypal on that address and this is our website um, www.feedbylambs.co.uk that is our website so you have the you have the email now this is the website feed www.feedmylambs.co.uk that's our website and on that website it's got every single information that you need for our ministry the timing the days and so on but i'll just quickly tell it to you and um you can also look at the website yourself and you get it so first of all you have the donation button where you can press that button and it, it will direct you how to donate to the ministry if you so desire and our ministry um it's a i dare say it's a young ministry but you know we're also we're in we're in um africa we're in Uganda at the moment and we are we've been there since 2003 and God has blessed us to do so many different things in Uganda and at this moment we are we are we are attempting to build some build some churches and some schools and just you know do the will and purpose of God for those people who are needy and who have no one to help them people are there that they have to boil water for tea they have they have no money so the Lord has sent us in the midst of that and then we are there to bless the people how God will allow us to bless them. So with your help and your sending us or your help towards the buildings and so on, it shall be well. And then that you'll have a part in it also. You could see for yourself, you'll have a part in it. Thank God for that. So um, I say you got the uh, um, donation button. You have a button that will show you directions how to get to the ministry if you're in Europe, if you're in London or England and you want to visit us because you have a pressing need, believe me, the law will do for you what you can't do for yourself. So um, on the website, I'll give you the details of those. I'll give you the details of our, our Sunday service, which is from 2.30 to 5 or 5.30 p.m. And at the end, there's prayers of deliverance at the end of each service. On Wednesday evening also from 8 p.m. till 10 p.m., we have a deliverance service. Come female dressed appropriately because you might be thrown about a bit and just come expecting maybe fast pray and so ask god to help you and deliver you from your situation come on a wednesday even that is a torrid time for the devil that is a time he does not like at all and our venue is at um, the united reformed church hall east Adders grove london southeast 22 se 22 8rh that is um, um the venue that we worship at and my um, uh, uh, landline, which you can get all of me on, is um, 0208-299-2077. But of course, it's all on our website. Please visit it and um, get the details that you need. And I'm um, sure God bless you. And on our website, you'll have to get onto our Facebook also. And um, just go and visit us and see what we're doing. Um, my dancing on the, on the website is still going strong. And I have a, a clip where we were ministering to the children in Uganda. In, um, Uganda. Um, that was in a place called Buhuni. Children just received, they were piled on top of one another. All the children, the, the Holy Spirit just took them out and they were all piled on top of one another. The Lord blessed those children. Some of them had epileptic effects. Some of them, some of them had blood disease. You name it, they had it. And the Lord just freed them all. What a wonder. What a beautiful. Even now I can't get over how beautiful God is. I have no words to, to say. I, I have no words to say. It's just too much. But well, it's not too much, but I have no words to say. Uh, so that's the God you're going to um, invest in. And I know he'll bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. So thank you for that, Brother, Brother Shannon, um, for that um, opportunity. And I pray God bless you. And also Omega Man Radio. And I pray that... Um, the YouTube thing we go from strength to strength. Um, getting myself ready to go on the live broadcast. That'd be really, really good. But um, thank God for Jesus. So God bless you, sir. And um, thank you 
for such a wonderful program and for the opportunity to do so. Honored to um, work with you. Praise and God. Amen. So our benediction is, uh, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that work in the work in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen, amen, and amen. And that is, by the way, from Ephesians chapter 3. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you all. My brother, in love and appreciate you. God bless you. You'll have a great weekend out there. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, brother. God bless you, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you, Brother Winston.